Perfect. You know what? Jerry will be not here uh, any that. minute. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna get this thing uh, fired up here. Let me do this real quick. Send that over. Get this title music. CWS intro. Right. Fucking thing sucks. We'll do it live. Cruise and whiskey. Get in, sit down, buckle up. Cruise and whiskey. Get in, sit down, buckle up. Cruise and whiskey. Welcome back to Cruising with Steak. Here we are, another Tuesday night on Grimerica FM, streaming live to the masses. It's it's going to be a roundtable tonight. We're we're just we're bringing it all the shots. So you know, if you guys don't like a whole bunch of people talking about a bunch of awesome shit, tune out now. Otherwise, come along for the ride. We got tonight the main man James Cruz, my number one squeeze. What's up, buddy? Hell, I like you. You can come over to my house and fuck my sister. What up? <laughs> And we're also joined by Mr. Felix Ortega, a.k.a. Fishman, a.k.a. Cliff Wall, a.k.a. Ocarina Steak. You're muted. <laughs> uh-huh. Highlight of my week talking to you guys. Oh, there it is. Oh, hey, hey, thanks. We're also joined by Mr. Watcher returning once again. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good to well, see you. It's great to see you, too. We mm-hmm. got the Martian archaeologist. Welcome. Oh, hello. Okay, we need to come up with a shorter name for you. Like, because when I'm just talking to you, can I, do I call you Mar, Martian, Marsh? You can yeah. call me whatever you want. My actual name is Marshall. So if you call me <laughs> Marsh, Martian, Marshall, like it all okay, sounds the same it, to me. I don't really care. It all mm-hmm. works. There we go. I like it. And we are also joined by Mr. That Guy. Hey, word to you, defense attorney. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Man, Jerry's running a little late tonight. You know, Jerry's Jerry. He'll be here. The the ghost of Jerry, the spirit of Jerry's he, he with us. He worked your shrink and civil harassment attorney. <laughs> yes. He's contractually binding. He's, yeah, he I mean that's here. why we pay him all the the, the big bucks. <laughs> yeah, Although guys. in Jerry's defense, he doesn't mind being contractually bound. I'm just saying. <laughs> There's a lot going on. How's Jerry's? How is Jerry going to take that? <laughs> I don't know. Probably any way you give it to him. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a ton of shit going on in the news, guys. All sorts of stuff. We got, uh, we got the whole Mueller report, which is just melting brains. Or we don't have the Mueller report. Or we don't. Yeah, we don't have the Mueller report, which, which, oh man, that's fuckery. Jesse Smollett, uh, Jesse Smollett is is a free man today. Uh, what else is going on? There's a bunch of other stuff. Oh, Michael Evanetti, he got, uh, he's got charges coming against him now. Some huge fucking charges. For trying to extort money from Nike or something, Oof. it's just it's, we got turkey vultures flying through, through windows, dude. Yeah. Turkey vultures, yeah. Turkey vulture synchronicities, it's just mm-hmm. it's, they're everywhere, man. <laughs> they are in Grim's backyard. Dude, I know. There's tons of them. They're all in that tree. <laughs> Shitload of them in that tree. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what do you guys think of the the Mueller report? Anybody I'm waiting for the movie. Good? Yeah, <laughs> you think it's the, you think it's gonna be? You think that they're oh, not gonna? Had a, you already had had like a serialized version of it on TV played out in detail. Oh my god, dude! Yeah, it's you already it's, got the movie version of it. <laughs> you got the fiction <laughs> version of everything already. Unsolved mysteries, right? Yeah, so, I think it's maybe solved, but whatever. Now <laughs> I'm questioning what I thought before. I'm like, whoa, maybe there is collusion. Yeah, exactly. It's like, who do you even trust? I've never trusted anything the government's ever said before. But why am I going to trust them on this? Like, I don't, I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I never funny. assumed that there was Russian collusion. No, I mean, it all seemed like bullshit because I'm just fabricated from the Steele dossier. Mm. But I think that there was a lot of fuckery going on with Israel, maybe, and that's why they're not going to release any of the documents. That's just my theory. I think Israel was really involved, but I think that guy would probably know more from his secret transcripts that he gets from the CIA desk. (laughs) Shoes. It's just the shoes. It's just the shoes. It's just shoes. It's not. There's there's no. no. Yeah. I mean, shoe business. So I guess like my my whole thing with the Mueller report and literally everything that the media shitstorm 
for the past couple of years has been. It's like, hey, so wait a minute. If all of everything everyone is alleging is true, then a person who got to be president got to be president by doing backdoor deals with all sorts of like multinational corporations and foreign governments and like really, you know, underhanded money deals. And like, that's just how things are anyways. So I'm like, how is that different than the actual standard operating procedure that every single other president is utilized to Mm -hmm. get into office? So like, even if it is true, it's just not a change of the status quo at all. And so it doesn't matter. This whole thing is just like a giant prescription excuse. It is just a big, you know, circus. Someone's trying to make a sea change. Welcome, Jerry. In other words, Tuesday in D.C., yeah, exactly. Just Machiavellian politics, the way it's always been. Man. Well, I mean, maybe that's why they went after him so hard, because they're like, well, this is how the game is played. Everybody knows that you do corrupt things to become president, so we'll just find what corrupt thing he did and bring it to light. Yeah, but they don't have a platform. They've got nothing to run on. So they're just running on, we hate Trump. Hell yeah. Yeah, because yeah. the real move is don't run on a platform. It's like, you know... Get, right. like wide, widespread uh, vote of no confidence in all of the platforms, government and otherwise. And then, you know, whoever controls the new one is going to be the real master of the game. Th- that would be the communists. Well, yeah, who, whatever they want to call themselves when they fucking take over, who knows what it's going to be. We should ask AOC and find out. Oh, man. How about the Green no New thanks. Deal? Didn't vote it down without one vote for it today. It was like 40. It was what was it like 53 to nothing? And then like every other Democrat voted present. Like, no, it was just a joke. Well, it wasn't even a defined plan. What are they voting on? You exactly. Know? A huge spending bill. Yeah. Ah, oh, just insanity. And then that senator on the floor today doing that huge presentation. With like still oh, yeah. with still fighting off the <laughs> yeah, yeah, shark data yeah, Star Wars shit tauntauns and stuff like dude what is what is this world coming to like what 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 planet did I wake up in that's what I just yeah, know any, anytime you hear the phrase sharks with freaking lasers on their heads from the well <laughs> of the Senate you know you know it's a fun day <laughs> yes oh man I don't know man but what I do know is Twitter's hilarious. The left yeah. is just dying right now, and and it's just and now they're putting all their eggs in this. What is there? Some kind of and New York something or other investigation going on? I don't know. It's yeah. There's it's, an investigation of of uh, of the the Trump Foundation, right? Uh, in the Southern District of New York. Yeah. Ah, uh, there you go. SDNY. That was what I was looking for. We're gonna find something somewhere. Oh yeah, dude. They're gonna try as Look, hard as they can. We're looking for it. And hard and that's what they're going to push <laughs> it doesn't matter what they find no nah. because even if they don't find anything they're going to say they, they're looking for it mm-hmm. they're, they're out to prove a negative they're out to prove that he's guilty i i'm waiting for the phrase absence of evidence does not mean evidence of absence i'm waiting well, for that phrase <laughs> a- aoc already said it with her uh being factually correct is not as good as morally correct yeah yeah yes exactly yes oh oh yeah, it's a little bit different, but yeah, yeah. Double, double speak. There's some double speak. It's fucking not even double speak. LMBs is just hey, like if I don't think you're okay, I can just do whatever I want to. Yeah, I think she's just paralyzed from the neck up, which is fascist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which she claims to fight against. She's a conundrum. Yeah, they're all great liberators, aren't they? You know, that's that's the line that everyone gives out when they're starting the great revolution. Mm-hmm. What's your excuse? <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Meet the new boss, same as the old boss? Mm-hmm. New mm-hmm. age is the same as the old age. Mm. Man. All right, so no- nothing burger Mueller report. What else? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, I think we pretty Mueller much wrapped that up. That. <laughs> All right, show's over. <laughs> show's over. over. I'm, I'm actually surprised that it was a nothing burger. I really, I really thought that Mueller was going to screw Trump. Yeah. Well, I think but, at some point, if you do that, you have to have something to back it up with, right? They could just make it up. They could just make it up. It's not going to go to trial. The the only not thing bad. that was going to the only thing that he was going to be able to present as evidence was his colonoscopy because that was where any evidence was going to come from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, in yeah, terms of an impeachment, it's not a trial. There's no 
prosecution. It's it's a vote, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's no defense for anything that's brought up. You're brought up on charges and you're impeached. Boom. You just have to keep, you know, uh, you have to keep a sitting president embattled for long enough to like paralyze any sort of agenda that they can do. That's the it, tactic. That's- that's, That's a tactic that the opposite side has every other time. The they, Republicans did it to Obama for years. I mean, it's not yeah. a new tactic, but, the, yeah, but they didn't impeach him, though. That was, the lowness of this tactic is bad because they're going to come out now and say, oh, we're going to impeach him. And for two more years, we're going to hear he's going to get impeached. He's going to be in jail. You're going to hear this repeating bullshit from the left, from the <laughs> liberal media, which essentially programs their followers because they're a bunch of fucking NPCs, as far as I can tell. Yeah. You know, I, I, there's no collusion there you know whatever here's the Mueller report i don't care i still think he's a, you know, whatever why jerry yeah, when, yeah i think when, the was that it was not that it was going on but that that it had such wholesale backup from from the news media it was getting repeated it was a conspiracy theory that was widely held it, well, it wasn't just widely held. It was widely promoted by, you know, not just consumers of information, but the people that were communicating the information. Right. Hell and who, yeah. And who coordinated all of that? Well, I guess we'll find out. We're supposed to believe it was organic. No, no one's going to go after anybody. This is all just going to be forgotten about because the Democrats aren't going to stop. Schiff's still in charge of the intelligence community. That's the intelligence right. community. I don't know. <laughs> It's like uh, what everybody says about their own state when, you know, they claim that uh, if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. You know, that's what's going to happen. I mean, that's the push. That's how fast this stuff goes, you know. They're already pushed. They've already shifted away from the Mueller report. They're talking about, you know, his tax tax returns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got to go after those. Fuck yeah. Well, that's how they got uh, people to stop Uh, talking about the Mueller report. Um. Trump needs to come out more often listing the things he's done that are good yeah. and confronting these people who, these nays, these people who scream, you know, Oh, he's a racist. Oh, he's a fascist, whatever. They need to be confronted. Nobody confronts them. Everybody backs down. But when they do, they, they, yeah, they, they, yeah, you hear it a lot. Like, yeah, well, I hear it a lot through like no yeah. agenda, but like just, uh, you know that you do sometimes you'll get somebody like with a microphone going around and asking these fucking people like oh right what all it. all it is 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 these uh headline grabs they don't nobody knows anything right just people can't have a conversation counting. yeah so like the issue it's the best thing understand. they're like well what do you think why why do you think this is a good idea da, 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 and, they're, and they're like blown away and with especially with the answers or you get blown away with they have no fucking clue like why they're there i mean you might get one person with it pseudo idea of, of 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 the topic that they're there for or, or the the that they're chanting <laughs> yeah it's all talking points right you know i mean he's an he's an obvious racist because that shit that happened back in the 70s with housing uh you know in his, <laughs> in his apartments like there there's these talking points that they have that have just been thrown around since you know since the election like when they were still campaigning and they you don't hear much about it. him being a misogynist anymore though no no, no. Uh, maybe yeah that one well the problem is is the trump rotation cycle is so long of everything that they shit on him about that you know it's going to take like a good three or three to six months before misogyny comes back in the news it'll make it around yep. though <laughs> yeah i think i think the news has become uh the the reiteration and propagation of of truisms you know stuff that's not r- r- actually true but you say it enough, you repeat it enough, and it becomes, oh, yeah, well, yeah, Trump's a racist. He's a misogynist. He's, mm-hmm. you know, he's well, a counter. Do you, know you know where the Hitler label came from? No. Was, oh, fuck, I forgot. No. Was it that guy in Germany back in 1930-something? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I forgot what I was going to say. Well, the, you know, the whole racist thing is about. I know what the whole racist thing is about. It was about his. It was, it was about the. Uh, no, the racist thing was about him. Uh, no, no, in this some kind of hiring practice that happened in a company in New York, or uh, no, president. it wasn't hiring. It was. Go ahead, Jer. I don't care about the past. In this presidency, they've labeled him a racist because he wants to build a wall. 
because he obviously hates brown people. Oh, yeah. And the, and the Muslim ban, the Muslim ban where he wanted to keep every single Muslim out of our country. No, he didn't. That's <laughs> not what that was. It was, it was I know it, was it wasn't. No a travel ban, which is the same countries that Obama had mm-hmm. no travel bans on. Yeah, it, it's kind of insidious, the kind of the oversimplification of things. And it, it gets repeated a lot. I mean, like mm-hmm. the idea of he's anti-immigrant. No, he's not anti-immigrant. He's anti-illegal immigrant. Mm-hmm. Which Roger is Waters difference. also pushed the idea of him being the next um, Hitler in all of his uh, his Jeez. new his new uh, concerts as well. Had Trump and these like and Hitler imagery and Nazis marching, and it was actually. Yeah, pretty, I think Roger Roger Waters, Waters has done that for years. That was that was from the movie from freaking uh, the Wall. Yeah, but he didn't have Trump in it. Obviously. Yeah. Bush in it before. <laughs> Now well, I put Trump in it. Hmm. He's like an ultra fascist liberal, whatever. But you I know, just, if the only if the only tool if the only tool you have is a hammer, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> every every problem looks like looks like Hitler. Every put it this way: he's riding on the coattails of himself from fifty years ago. Yeah, hey, be yeah. be nice. Everyone's trying to stay relevant. Mm-hmm. Everyone needs money, man. Come on. That's why I'm grateful that he I've never ever been that. relevant. Yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> and never had money. That's Here's to irrelevance. <laughs> never want to be. I think it would be helpful if people remember that the media is supposed to be like an apparatus of the government. And right now, there's such a marked, uh, mar- marked division between the media and the, gov- like the actual apparatus of the government itself that I think people should see that the media was essentially co-opted by people with a very certain agenda and that group, whoever they ultimately are, um, are doing the same thing in a number of the developed countries across, especially the Western world. And it's all happening at the same time and they're willing to do really crazy shit for it. And (laughs) it's happening. Yeah. And I think, uh, well, there was a, there was a law here for a while and I'm looking for it. uh, That that actively prevented the, the federal government from intervening in, uh, in domestic news and communication. It was and the statutory law, man. That's bullshit law. Yeah, but, but it was repealed. And people are allowed to engage it and engage in it now. Their government's allowed to engage in it now. So, uh, uh, Smith-Munt. Oh, yeah, Smith-Munt Smith Modernization yep. Act. Yeah, 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 didn't know, but yeah, Obama repealed yeah. that. That's, yeah. that's the uh, propaganda. Yeah, the propaganda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was part of it was part of NDAA in 2012. Yeah, free so, free free journalism is like a you know free journalists get marginalized and they get killed. So yeah, and well, then okay, so in, I, I, wait, I want to say something about the the NDAA yeah, yeah. and the whole Smith Month thing. Um, I researched that. If you read the change to it, it's mm-hmm. not really like people say it is. It's, it doesn't allow the CIA to to give news stories to CNN to read like, it no, to. no, it doesn't. And you yeah. know, the mockingbird thing is still, it's still mockingbird is still obviously obvious. Uh, it's right. obvious. That's where they give yeah. the strips to the puppets, but yeah, yeah but the, the change in there was to, to do for uh, propaganda on American uh, protectorates, things like that. Ah, uh, okay. All right. I, I don't remember. It's been so long, but it wasn't what people were saying it was. It's close, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just saying, like, from a de facto perspective of any government that's in power, you have to control the media. You absolutely have to. So it's going to be a priority number one. Yep. You have to control the people. Yeah, that's yeah. why that's why there's all these uh, people getting deplatformed now. Like anybody who doesn't uh, pull the mainstream narrative or p- follows the script, they are instantly a racist, white supremacist, deplatformed, gone. Kick them yeah, that's yeah, not the government that's doing that. Those are those are the well, those are think, the individual outlets. Oh, dude, it's, all, it's all the that's same. That's going to change because those platforms will be will be dead in five years. Yeah, it, 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 it's just that like there's a certain faction of the government who believes that Trump is essentially pulling a coup, and whoever is behind Trump is essentially pulling a coup from what's inside their but their it's, operation, it's, and so that's why they're they're going after him so hard. Right, and it's them who are trying to pull a coup now. Assault. Yeah, well, everyone's trying to pull a coup. The, the original coup is the Kennedy assassination and it's kind of, you know, that's reached its boiling point for whatever it was supposed to achieve. And now everyone's scrambling because the, the big goal is right around the corner and no one wants to let 
you know, the their enemies get their hands on it. Right. Just, I think that just like nobody's in charge and fucking inmates are running the place. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Let's call it on the political segment. Let, eh. Yeah, that's that's that. Oh. Just to close, I was, thinking, I was thinking we should cash in on all the, the Trump hatred and open up a restaurant, a anti-Trump restaurant. I, I wish I could collect that loosh. Collect Did that loosh, yes. I found, have, I found a... Uh, you have dartboards with his face on it. I'm Googling it right now. This might already be a thing. I, found you know, I remember when, uh, right after 9-11, uh, the, it wasn't waxy, but it was somebody who makes, uh, like... Uh, pisser biscuits, you know the urinal cookie things, had had, oh, yeah. had little had little mats that go in the bottom of the of the urinal with uh, with Osama bin Laden's face on it. Jeez. I remember those. <laughs> I've seen signs above urinals that say, "Please don't eat the big white mints." <laughs> you know that has I've to happen. Places where that was necessary. It. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Poland at the time. You were you were in Poland? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Good joke. <laughs> yeah, I hate her. So I got a call from my sister this morning, and my my dad's in the hospital. Your dad's in the Uh-oh. hospital? Oh yeah. no! Let's send him good yeah. vibes. He was dizzy. He's fine. He was dizzy and had pains in his stomach. And, well, I got to I've got to step back from here now. So he went. To, he took an ambulance to the hospital. He was in there. They're running tests. Um, about. 10 years ago or so, my mom turns up with having diverticulitis, which is a disease where the cilia in your intestines doesn't function properly. So shit gets caught in the folds Uh, and gets infected and it hurts like a motherfucker. And uh, it can be, it can be fatal. If you leave shit growing in your intestine, it's like leaky gut, but concentrated. Yeah. Um, And then my sister got it. And then my brother got it. Oh, is it contagious? Uh, I guess familial. Is it, is it hereditary? Genetic. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I refused to get. I told my sister she's crazy. If she's got me. Anyway, turns out my dad might have it now. Wow. Damn. Isn't that crazy? Shit. Jerry, I gotta go get checked. I think it's uh, living in Chicago gives you diverticulitis. Gives you it's leaky possible. gut. Yeah. I don't know. It's just crazy. So, I sent my sister this picture. Which I should have had loaded, but I apologize. Uh oh. <laughs> you need a squatty potty. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Yeah, you're, you're I don't have, it's not me, it's my family. You should is give that, them squatty potties. Is that the is that the ad with the uh the unicorn that, that poops uh, multicolored ice cream? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's Oprah. <laughs> Oprah. <laughs> diverticulitis. <laughs> you know, I would expect to get diverticulitis from Oprah. <laughs> I wish you gave me diverticulitis. Can you get diverticulitis from a person? I don't know. Is that even possible? I don't believe it really exists. Uh, Only if you ask them really nicely. (laughs) It's like fibromyalgia. It's it's not real. It's Mm stress-induced. There's someone at work who has that, and that person is calls it sick a lot. My my grandmother had it, and uh, this was in the days before arthroscopic surgery. Uh, So they had to uh, they had to do like large incisions and you know, pull everything out and stretch it across the floor and stomp on it and things like that. I'm exaggerating. Like operation, the game. Yeah. 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 Uh, And uh, when she, when she was in the process of recovery, when she was feeling better, you know, a week or something down the road, because they had her whole, uh, you know, abdominal cavity opened up. uh, She had some friends over and uh, everything's closed up. And she says, uh, she says, you want to see the scar? (laughs) The, the friend says, uh, I don't know. Where is it? She says, oh, it runs all the way from my chin down to my moneymaker. Oh, man. <laughs> so, holy crap. <laughs> and what I got he? a three-foot slit, baby. <laughs> I thought, oh, wow. Snap. Okay. Yeah, Ouch. I could have gone all week without hearing that. Amazing. Yeah, me too. It's like the double slit experiment. <laughs> it's exactly yeah, like that. <laughs> no. Uh. Yeah, you can no. cut that one out, uh, Grim. No, I don't no, cut things out. Man, though, right? <laughs> That's good. <Man. laughs> my my uh, wife did a fecal transplant for her her grandma. Saved her life. Really? Wow. Well, awesome. Fecal transplant. Serious shit. She's super. That is literally serious shit. <laughs> man. Who needs friends when you have enemas? 
Yeah. That's some powerful yeah. shit right there. <laughs> yeah. So Grim, you posted that thing about the diverticulitis uh, trapped in the diverticulum. Yeah, little seeds little things. Yeah, seeds people and things. Don't, gets. People don't realize how many seeds are in food that you eat, like corn. There's seeds in corn. They're just mm-hmm. so small. Mm-hmm. Wow. That oh, kind mini, of shit. mini seeds. Yeah, little baby seeds will get stuck well, in your lining. It's like the, it's actually the uh, what is it? The endosperm, not the yes. whatever is it. The endosperm is in mm-hmm. closing that. I think it's actually called the sperm within that. That's the seed. And those are the seeds that get stuck in the diverticulum. Felix. Yeah. Uh, booty, booty rooter in chat just mentioned uh, fecal transplants. And yeah. maybe that's what your dad needs, dude. I can't yeah. have mine. I don't you, need yeah, you got to go on an in, inversion table. Terry's, oh, works. Terry's worked very hard to be full of shit. <laughs> right. That's right. Bitch. No, I don't. Let Tom on his own, man. He's on his own. I'm not gonna tell him what to do. I have no idea. Mm. Inversion table, and then he's got to hop into a um, uh, one of those salt. What is that? Salty. He's gonna do exactly what his doctor tells him to do. Float I'll tank. Get, get a flu oh, shot while he's there. Oh yeah, we're supposed to have a float tank experiment, aren't we? I yeah, forgot we about are. that. We talked but about that a while ago. Have you guys ever done a float tank? No. 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 no I want to. Felix yeah, quite a bit. Do you get claustrophobic? No, I don't. I don't. Okay, that's good. I would get bored. I get <laughs> bored. I had a crick in my neck and I only did it once. It was tough. Do you know how to meditate at all? In any way? I think we all know how yeah. to do it. I, don't think I brush my teeth. I brush my teeth though. twice a day. Well, there you go. It's just that as counts. good as meditation. <laughs> I've never. <laughs> hey, do, do, do we need a group float meditation? Tank. No, I've, never been to a float I've got one teed up. Yeah. Oh, can we yeah, do a contract do revocation while we're at it? Yeah. Contract revocation? Mm-hmm. Are all the parties here? <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> all right. What's next on the menu? What is next on the menu? What we got? What do we got? So what's we going on? Do a group meditation, uh, right? I heard guy? some. I heard something about uh, turkey vultures were coming up a lot. Watching oh, you got some, you got vultures. some you got yeah. some turkey vulture info because I, I posted this picture. There was like there was like yeah. like ten turkey vultures just in this tree when I got home from work the other day, and they've been lingering around quite a bit. So I think there might be something dead in the woods, possibly. But there's a ton of them. They've just been around. You need to get Leonidas to come and make a picture of it. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's been weird shit with uh, vultures lately. It started when I was listening to Nox Mente uh, with Nathan Lee on it. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was last week or whatever. Yeah, that was but, last week, yep. So I'm listening and I'm reading. Actually, you know, on that uh, that post, uh, your, the 88th episode, where there was that guy named John something that was posting all those number numbers oh yeah on uh on twitter like yeah i, I don't twitter. even know who that guy was he doesn't follow me or anything he just like came out of nowhere and started posting all this shit on that thread and i'm like what's yeah. going on <laughs> yeah i had no idea what was going on about it but i i decided shout to read to that guy. again yeah shout Wait, out to what? so i decided to read again i go on on that tweet and it, actually the tweet's been deleted now but really yeah for some reason i don't know but so i'm reading it and as I'm reading it, Nathan is talking about um, a woman that he proposed to. And he said he went to put on the ring and the ring shot off into the ocean. Holy crap. And, and There's uh, a sign. Yeah. And he said uh, it was a sign, but he said there was a lot of signs that he shouldn't have been you know, with this woman. And then he goes to, to call her something. And he says, Vol, as I'm reading Vulture on this post. Oh, man. Uh, and I'm like, oh, well, like to me, he said it in my head because I was reading it. Yeah, and, exactly. That's and awesome. then I listened back. He didn't say it, actually, but I talked to him later and he was going to say it, but stopped himself. So that was pretty interesting. So, And we were talking about um, Alan Parsons Project last mm-hmm. uh, last episode. Yeah, all, Alan Parsons Project has an album called Vulture Culture. Yes. And that came into my head when I'm reading this and seeing all this stuff happen. Also, Nathan's favorite number is eight. And it was on, you know, all this stuff was on the 88th episode. Oh, man. We're talking. And then, so I look at the, I bring up the Vulture Culture um, album. And it was came out in 1984, which is both Nathan and I's birth year. 
which I found interesting. In then, Camatria, Vulture is a 9 and an 11. 9s and 11s. Mm, interesting. <laughs> so, so then um, I realized that on the album cover of Vulture Culture, it's an Ouroboros with a vulture for a head. So if you don't know what an Ouroboros is, it's like a snake eating its own tail. Represent or yeah. uh, life feeds love- on life, that kind of idea. Mm-hmm. I love that symbol. The, love that. Yeah, and, and it's a great symbol. Love it. And it's the Gnostic symbol. And what's interesting about that is I had just put on this pendant that I haven't worn in years or maybe a year. Uh, but it is the Ouroboros. Yeah. Oh, cool. Nice. Snake eating yeah, dude, That's nice. And uh, <clears throat> it says on it, um, like the phrases, it's in French. Uh, it's something to the effect of like the beginning depends on the end. Mm. Um, and then, so the Ouroboros is a ring, right? And he was talking about putting a ring on the woman's finger. Yeah. And there's the vulture head. Then you brought up vultures, turkey vultures. Mm -hmm. So I'm just getting all these vulture things. And then this morning I look online and a a news article comes up and it is about a turkey vulture flying through the window of an ESPN. Yeah, I was just going to play that. (laughs) Dude, yeah. Jeez. So... Yeah, interesting. Also, I go to read this article. There's two art main articles. One of them is by a guy named Jerry Nathan. The other one <laughs> is by a guy named Nate Scott. So I'm like, this is just too bizarre. It's <laughs> it's weird. It's yeah. Synchronicities, yeah. man. Just just so mysterious. <laughs> oh man, yeah. It's just I don't know what to think, but pretty interesting anyway. The Dude, externalization so, of interior phenomena. Yeah. So what's the symbolism behind vultures? We got it. We got any kind of insight on these in uh, Egypt. Uh, oh yeah. Well in Egypt, they, they had to do with the feminine actually. And like nurturing. Mm-hmm. And uh, the symbol of the vulture was for uh, upper Egypt, which is actually Southern Egypt. They had it backwards, or they have it backwards. Really? Like blow ass one. Is that the red? Isn't there like the red and like the black? They differentiate to the R- red and black refers to something else. I don't uh, know about uh, upper Egypt, was... meaning like high Egypt, like the high desert. Yeah, high or upper no, Egypt uh, is the lower part. Yeah, of Egypt. Uh, upper Egypt is southern it's Egypt. Southern, southern headwaters Egypt. of the yeah, Nile. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. But I think like, the red the is like... one and all that. Yeah, yeah, it's the headwaters of the Nile and like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But isn't the red like more more desert and the black is black is like the black soil from yeah. all the yeah so so like upper and lower Egypt are referring to like uh, the flow of the Nile, red and black land are referring to the desert versus the soil, and red and white crowns are referring to upper and lower Egypt's crowns respectively. Right. I also yeah, have what, something else. What I meant to say. Um, the image was of He which is an Egyptian god that sometimes has a frog face, which hmm. is interesting oh. with the Kek thing and he. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think that... Also, the, it's the... Yeah. No, sorry. Go, 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 go. It's the god of uh, the primordial waters as well. Birds he. falling from the sky sounds like a scene right out of a horror movie, but it happens in real life too. A family in Sioux Falls recently got a shock when a huge turkey vulture rapidly descended from the sky. <laughs> What James, happened? Sounds like falling. Yeah. And landed yeah. on their deck. <laughs> there we go. The area had been experiencing severe winter weather. Remember, his dick. who works as a pastor, noticed the My still dick. alive vulture was covered in ice. Even more bizarre, the creature sat rigidly upright after landing on the deck. The frozen <laughs> oh. vulture spent the whole day there before taking off at some point during the night. Another turkey vulture also fell on the roof of their house and seemed to be dead. According to animal control, <laughs> others with similar experience had also called. Last year, okay. terrified residents of Millville, New Jersey, watched as dozens of ah, stop. Okay, yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> well, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Watcher, did you have some more? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, Het, the god Het, uh, also uh, holds the two palms of time, which is kind of a reference to eighty-eight, 
Uh, and also I went to, so I was thinking, uh, you know, what's the symbolism behind Egyptian vultures? And so I go type in Egyptian vultures. They have like, there's five different kinds. Anyway, I'm watching this little video. It actually had 888 views oh, as man, I'm watching. Right. <laughs> I'm just, it's just insane. I'm like this. Just compound synchros, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Compound synchros. That's crazy. Yeah. I think the, the vulture occurs as psychopomp in a lot of places. So that's really? basically the, the entity or force that's responsible for carrying the soul of a person from one world to another. Mm, uh, like, it's, a, like a stork. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Except but cooler. Death. And yeah. so I think that, that that's uh, speculated to be one of the birds at Gobekli Tepe is a vulture that is often inferred to have this kind of psychopomp meaning. It's there in uh, Tibetan Buddhism. You get the vulture is basically a psychopomp as well. You know, it lives mm. on the edge between life and death and, you know, it eats carrion. So it's this kind of ultimate embracing of all parts of nature. It's very tantric in that way. And also, like you know, it, yeah, it, like it's, it's just soar, like steak. <laughs> it soars above everything. And it, that's also a very powerful image in their culture when they're talking about the nature of the original uh, mind is the image of the the lone bird you know soaring in the empty sky so it's uh yeah vulture is very powerful so the fact that there's yeah. these all this vulture stuff occurring that's what comes up for me but also mm -hmm. the vulture shows up when things are dead and dying so there's yeah, that there waits for something yeah. to die yeah. Yeah. Like the, the good part of it just comes like, for like the Grimstick. tantric practitioners because they get initiated into this other system and so things have a different meaning for them than they do for other people mm. so you know what could be an omen for someone would be interpreted differently for a tantric practitioner right. and would apply to them differently than it would yeah. i guess in kind of a more standard interpretation that might apply across it's all about your spiritual other, worldview yeah other many like exoteric versions of mm -hmm. this kind of thing it's all about attitude it's all about attitude it's really well. I looked up I looked, I looked up uh, uh, etymology of uh, vulture and um comes from Latin vultur or vultur and that means to pluck or to tear tear to tear to tear, tear. and then it also tear uh and it also said take a look at uh svelte can you say it with me svelte svelte okay. svelte. svelte character svelte like, what's wrong with svelte like slender life. like a woman like not like a not slender no, no, not like a woman it's like slender mm -hmm. strong kind of person it's like thick it's like oh, a, like, like grim steak kind of like, like grim steak skinny, skinny thick chick skinny thick wow, slender i like that life. like i like, like a skinny I thought that was zuftic it's not rubenesque you know you've got <laughs> definitely not rubenesque yeah right so under rubenesque you've got svelte and then you've got like perfect it's like kind of how i grade you <laughs> <laughs> like um Gwyneth Paltrow. Not my uh, perfect. I like the. I prefer Svelte or Rubenesque. I'll show up. Svelte. <laughs> you're, okay. you're jumping the shark over there, Jerry. We jump sharks. <laughs> That's that, the entire. That phrase has been being misused. <laughs> we you jump what, fish when, tanks. It's all when about you, when you jump. When you jump the Sharknado, you got my respect. <laughs> oh, snap. I know what it means. No, I know, but I heard someone on CNN saying that something that like uh, <clears> I don't remember what it was. It jumped the shark, but. It, but what she was uh, trying to say is it ran a train. See, no, actually, it, 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 it lost the plot. The uh, THC guy, Greg Carwood, actually mentioned jumping the shark, and he 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 totally missed the whole um, the Fonz being on the skis. He just said he oh. jumped over jumped over one, and he he got it he got it all kind of mixed up. Man, <laughs> you should send him an email. Yeah, the pot. So, so, so send him an email and correct him. <laughs> Too late. That was a long time ago. Correction. Just bitch slap him on Twitter. I did say something on Twitter about it. I don't know if he got back to me. <laughs> no, he he blocks you. Yeah, <laughs> he told me. <laughs> no, he told me. Yeah. Uh, Darn it. All right. So, any, anyone got more vulture stuff? No, nope. I think mm. we're vultured out. That's, that's, nope. yeah, vultured that's out. a little. This, uh, this one time on uh, family vacation, we went to New Hampshire <clears throat> with oh, some man. Bars. I Thought he was going to talk about band camp. Uh, well, <laughs> no, I know, right? It was not a bank. It was a ski ski joint. But it was summer. Anyway, I played a skin flute. Remember that dude I told you about last week? My friend who bar mitzvah I went to at Great America. Yes. yes. We went on tidal wave like a hundred times. Yeah. Yeah. So we yeah, went yeah. with his family up to New Hampshire. 
and uh, his brother was kind of a smart ass and hilarious. And there was a dude who was like the beverage food and beverage manager at the hotel who had this huge nose, and they called him we called him Vulture the whole time we were there. Behind <laughs> him. Vulture, it's Vulture. Look out, it's Vulture. Was, that's me. Man. Yeah, that's that's really it's mean. 10. What the fuck do you want? <laughs> I'm reminded of uh, the Beetlejuice. I'm going to use that against you when you run for president. <laughs> Go for it. That's probably not the worst thing you'll find. <laughs> You're like running Derek over. Derek Cthulhu's t- always been mean. <laughs> you know what? His thugs will take care of you. Don't worry about it. I'm a dick. <laughs> you guys, uh, you, probably, you probably heard about that one Beto guy writing some master Beto. Oh, are you talking about, about the cult of the, clou- the cow? Or, uh, yeah, about <laughs> stand on something. It. Running children over or something or other. Yeah, yeah. his his poetry okay. about uh, killing children. Yeah, it was kind of weird. He was involved in a like a hit and run. He was drunk and then he <laughs> took off. He got arrested and then got e- off. E- like, e- like Jesse Smollett got off kind of thing. Yeah. Freaking yeah. Let's Shaman. meditate. Y'all want to meditate? Doing some group medi- meditation. Up. That guy, you got some meditation? Guided meditation uh, for us? I have one for you. <laughs> I have a meditation for you if you're interested in calming down after all that exciting talk. You know I am. <laughs> I, will, totally I, I, will, I will respectfully abstain, but observe. <laughs> I guarantee you, you're going to like this. Okay. Uh-huh. This, will put, this will put you back into your, your peaceful place on Mars, Martian archaeologist. Well, lay it on us then, man. <laughs> all righty. Okay. I'm reading from a book called, and I promise I'm not making this up. I'll, I showed you the the, the cover. It's yeah. called, it's called, <clears throat> fuck that, an honest meditation by Jason Headley. All right. Are you ready? Up your form, ready. Any relation to Headley okay. Lamar? You're comfortable. Put the dogs away. Put the cats away. Make sure, make sure the television's off. Uh, you can leave your electric sex devices on if you like. Okay, this yes. book this book is a physical act of mindfulness. By reading these words and turning these pages, you will make your way to a more peaceful you. Let's try it now. Picture a thing that makes you want to choke a motherfucker. Now, release that thing as you turn the page. Just like that, there's no strife here. Only a clear, calm place. Turn the page again and feel the horse shit of external world fade from your awareness. Let this meditation help you find peace with the challenges that surround you because they are fucking everywhere. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> oh. Here cannot be ensnared by anyone's dumbassery not even your own if you find your mind wandering to other thoughts don't let it concern you just acknowledge that all this shit is fucking bullshit allow yourself to be lifted by the very best parts of you leaving all the flightless shitbirds behind Flightless shitbirds. Where they fucking belong. (laughs) This is a new place in your life. Clean and clear. Free of calamity created by every last ranch hand at the fuck up farm. (laughs) Those bitches get under your skin. They can't even. Take a deep breath. Now breathe out. Just feel the fucking nonsense float away. Breathe in strength. Breathe out bullshit. If your thoughts drift to the three ring shit show that is your life, bring your attention back to your breathing. And with each breath, feel your body saying, fuck that. Your thoughts become lighter. And all the soul-eating cocksuckers let each turn of the page guide you to a new place, away from the lingering thoughts about things 
away from the soft whisper of doubt and concern, away from the cul-de-sac of useless fuckery waiting at the ass end of worry. Simply turn each page to the next page. This could go on. <laughs> yes, Until the final page. <laughs> where you greet the world and everything in it with a new beautiful breath of oh, fuck that. <laughs> I like, yeah. Where'd you, where'd you, where'd you, where'd you, the meditation. Where, where'd you get yeah, this book from that guy? Great voice as well. <laughs> I found this book uh, in a hedge. In a hedge? <laughs> it's one of those hedge books. <laughs> I just huh? found it on the side <laughs> of the road. <laughs> fuck, fuck, no way. <laughs> uh, but I, I can give you the the ISBN number. The ISBN number is. Uh, hang on a second. Let me have my, my tacticals. Nine seven eight one one zero one nine zero seven two three eight. Yeah, and you can find that on Amazon. <laughs> or I will send you a, a for two hundred and seventy nine dollars. <laughs> uh, I got these meditation bells that you're supposed to start your meditation with and then end your meditation with. You guys uh, want to hear bring well, let's out? at least it, let's at least end with it. Yeah, let's, all let's right. Let's that. end. We didn't start with it. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like that snake that eats well, its own we tail. Can start again to re- reverse psychology. <laughs> Here it is. Silence, please. Nice That's bell. what I was missing. It's a good bell. I had to run to the living room for that. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, what's next on the agenda, guys? What do we got? <laughs> what about mm. the Flat Earth episode on Grimerica? Oh, dude, I didn't listen to it. <laughs> I can't. I can't entertain that. I just, who the fuck is talking about flat earth? Uh, Barry, Barry Weiss, I think they had on some flat David earth. David Weiss? David, David Weiss, Weiss, there you go. David Weiss. Barry Weiss sounds like a producer of like R&B hits. Yeah, Barry Weiss does. Barry like Weiss. That. Well, yeah, dude, I, 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 I popped in the, uh, when they were streaming it live on YouTube, I hopped in there for like five minutes and the chats were just a shit show. Like all these flat earthers came out of the woodwork and all these people talking shit. Oh. It was disgusting, man. <laughs> Like flat Earth is just a ridiculous topic. It's, it's all the rage. It, uh, it's, it's such bullshit. Yeah, it is. It really is. <laughs> it hey, really I'm kind of getting. I'm kind of getting big into it now, guys. Don't mm-hmm. be just like talking crap about it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm you. thinking about. I'm yeah, thinking about time. getting in. I'm thinking, thinking about, about getting into it. Uh, doing some research on it. Well, dude, they're gonna find out when we go back to the moon again real soon. Yeah, I mean, I'll send that pictures. You know, the Earth isn't flat. People have figured out that the Earth was fucking <laughs> a, a roughly spherical shape with sticks, and they fucking yes. did it a long time ago because they're all dumb. <laughs> and, and don't forget the hole in the ground. <laughs> yeah, come on now. <laughs> so if ground. anybody goes to the moon, I want them to stay the hell off my property. You don't want any of their germs. Yeah, no, screw that. I don't need somebody's coke. You know, Coke cans and freaking uh, you know, candy wrappers and crap on my property on the moon. <laughs> you own real estate on the moon? I do. I, I own two acres. Two acres? How'd <laughs> two you acre. come by that? Yeah. What's that? How'd you come by property on the moon? Uh, there's a, uh, okay, shameless plug. I don't know the guy. Don't uh, He doesn't owe me anything, but uh, there's a website called Lunar Embassy. Well, presumably uh, he's going to owe you the money for this property on the moon here pretty soon. No, no, no. I, I, owe, I owed him. I bought, I bought the property from him. And what happened was he, um, at some point wondered to himself, self who owns the moon. And he consulted a bunch of, a, a bunch of lawyers and, and, um, long story short, I may be embellishing somewhat. Uh, that he uh, learned that uh, no one had a legitimate claim to the moon. And so he, uh, he laid claim with the moon with all of the spacefaring nations of the world at the time, which was uh, the Soviet Union back when that existed, and the United States. <laughs> and uh, and 
Cuba team and filed the, and filed and uh, sent a sent a letter to the United Nations, which ostensibly at the time represented most of the nations on Earth, and uh, no one contested it. Wow! <laughs> wow. So, uh, and it went for many years that no one contested it, and I and I wonder still if anyone has contested it. Is he moved on to the stars yet? Oh uh, no, he he laid claim to all extraterrestrial real estate. Wow, nice. mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's a good move. It's pretty ballsy yeah, move, yeah. isn't it? So, well, yeah, but uh, who's going to challenge you for it? That's so like uh, presumably the people with the technology and money to do so. I mean, Barack Obama <laughs> with his jump room and all that. If you believe Andrew Bishago, but you know, uh, I love that guy. Uh, Wait, you know, what Mars, the fuck? Mars, he's maybe got a claim too, but the moon, I mean, you know, who can even breathe Wait, on sorry, that? sorry, hold on. Did you say Obama has a fucking jump room? No, no, I said, no, I said what yeah, I said, Iago said Obama and his jump room. It's not his jump room. Oh, so <laughs> Obama <laughs> and the jump room. So he doesn't own it. He's just room. affiliated with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so this was a, this was it's interesting. Uh, it's an interesting story. One of the candidates president in 2016 was a fellow by the name of Andrew <laughs> Go. Uh, and Basiago? he, Basiago? Basiago. yeah, that guy. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, like the bread, like, like the cheese. Yeah. Oh, that's Asiago. Sorry. <laughs> that's Asiago. Right. Uh, yeah. So Andrew, Andrew Bishago, uh, was, he, he's an interesting guy. I mean, he's, he's, uh, um, he's, a, he's a legitimate, uh, libertarian, uh, candidate who, uh, believes in limited government and transparency in government and, um, you know, returning to uh, returning to public use uh, lands that uh, you know there's no good reason to have them, you know, tied up for federal purposes and so on, you know, uh, limiting military deployments and so on. You know, the stuff that you that you would expect from libertarians. Yeah, exactly. You know, basically free market. Let the people who already have all the money. Basically sure. Yeah. Well, more it's money the good stuff. The system. Okay. Okay. All right. So, h- however you want to look at it, it's fine. Yeah. But in, okay. in addition to this. In addition to this, he's also uh, uh, he also uh, swears that he was part of a uh, a program as a child who was uh, he teleported to Mars, and one of the people that was in the program with him was a fellow by the name of Barry Sparrow, who ended up becoming President Obama. Yeah. So uh, he uh, has some kind of peripheral, from what I understand, contact with. Uh, God, who was the guy that was on uh, Coast to Coast or something? Was it Coast to Coast? The um, uh, the uh, the <clears throat> no. Marine. The, yeah, oh the, yeah. Well, this just sounds like the plot of the movie Doom. You know? <laughs> Do you guys ever see uh, that movie? You know, with I the think Rock? Doom came after. I think Doom, Doom came, came after came that. After. No, no, it didn't. No, the the well, the Doom, movie as the movie a movie came out after. in like two thousand and five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the movie came out. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And so it's got The Rock and Carl Urban and everyone's taking a jump room to Mars because they have an archaeological dig on Mars. And there's like a pre-existing portal from somewhere on Earth to Mars. And they're taking advantage of it. It's in yeah, Antarctica. yeah, it's in Antarctica. They take advantage of this portal. No, it they really, teleport. really is, is what I'm saying. Oh, you're saying it is. I can't remember where they put it in the movie, but it was kind of fun. You know? so the <laughs> like the one thing. that Bashago talks about is is north of San Francisco in, in, uh, in Marin County. Oh, it's, yeah, it's like six, in, in the back room of some something. tiny store. Of course it's in fucking Marin County. And the address is like six, 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 something <laughs> or seven, seven, seven. It's probably in the, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright buildings out there. You know, he said it was in the back of some, uh, like a convenience store of some kind on the side. Yeah, that makes sense. But it's oh, it's, it's, a, it's a down. convenience store. It's been torn down. Wow. Well, how will people ever get back? That's true. <laughs> Maybe they moved the jump room somewhere else. Uh, at, are we still talking about Basiago? Sure. Yeah, sure. Why not? Oh, well, this is sort of related to the moon, but did you guys hear SMQ on THC? SMQ on THC? All those acronyms? Yeah. Oh, that was a while ago. Yeah. You mentioned the, uh, the Mandela effect of Andy Warhol. There being a museum on the moon. Yeah. Uh, Andy Warhol Art Museum. So, yeah. Somehow, some way, they snuck it up there, but no one knew about it. And then all of a sudden, it was like written in the history that he did that. But it's, it's not like a building where you it's get tickets like a, and go see an exhibit. It's, you know, it's assorted shit of Andy Warhol's on the moon, and like a Ziploc bag or something, something like that. <laughs> but I never heard of it until he brought it up. And I'm like, wow. I looked it up. I'm like, damn. Yeah, it's on Wikipedia, so it must be true. 
<laughs> SM, SMQ's got his like finger on the, the pulse of you know, Andy at one point described himself as deeply superficial. <laughs> Mandela effects interesting, man. I go back and forth with it. Sometimes I think it's just people have shitty memories and just pop culture things make us forget. But then other times it's like, no, I definitely remember shit being different. It's, I had it's some kind of sorry. It's, it's just a combination of mass gaslighting yeah. and uh, <laughs> bad memories and people just trying to make their lives interesting. Mm-hmm. What's this gaslighting again? What's this gaslighting gas- means you're tr- uh, basically convincing someone of something that's not true, so you make them insane. But kind of oh, like okay. uh, you know Russian collusion for the past two and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I guess I was thinking like moonlighting, or like isn't that when someone has like a job at night or something? Oh, they're moonlighting. Yeah, I was yeah, thinking. Moonlight. That's what I was thinking. I <laughs> uh, I brought up uh, the the Beast of Bray Road on my on the last episode here mm-hmm. on the last episode my podcast uh cruising mistake yeah <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> i brought it up because it's 15 10 miles away from my hometown and i told my mom about it and she works night shift and she actually went and she went and watched it and she says when she gets home from night shift she like closes the garage really fast and gets in the house really fast because she doesn't want the dog man <laughs> wolf, wolf man to come get her yeah <laughs> So they they do a lot of like little dramatization of of what people experienced on the the country roads in Elkhorn, Wisconsin. So Beast of Bray Road in like the ninety, it's might might have been the nineties. There was like a flap of is it like on uh, Highway like, W or something? Is Bray Road off of like twelve Highway twelve or like forty three? Wisconsin has all these state roads that are letters, like State Road A. There's a twelve, and it it would probably be like. NN maybe there's an NN that goes through there and uh yeah so in like the 90s there was a, a flap of uh, sightings in this country road and, and around the area and there was also some occult we talked about this already right yeah probably guys, yeah we talked but go go watch it it was a pretty pretty fun little watch and it hit home for me and um soaked it up into the shitty sponge that is my head Yes, that's what you got to do. I found I found a, a crazy article about uh, it's called the trauma floor. This is an article on the Verge. Uh, it's the secret lives of Facebook moderators in America, and uh, this is pretty crazy shit. Content warning: This story contains discussion of serious mental health issues and racism. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The panic attack. The panic attack started after Chloe watched a man die. <laughs> he spent the last three and a half weeks in training, trying to harden herself against the daily onslaught of disturbing posts, the hate speech, the violent attacks, the graphic pornography. In a few more days, she will become a full-time Facebook content moderator. Or what the company she works for, a professional service vendor named Cognitize, or Cogniz, Cogniz, Cognizant. Cognizance. It, no, it's not. It's uh, Cognizant. Yeah. yeah. Cognizant. Cognizant. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for this uh, portion of her education, Chloe will have to moderate a Facebook post in front of fellow trainees. When it's her turn, she walks into the front of the room where the moderator displays a video that has been posted to the world's largest social network. None of the trainees have seen it before, Chloe included. She She presses play. The video depicts a man being murdered. Someone is stabbing him dozens of times while he screams and begs for his life. Chloe's job is to tell the room whether this post should be removed. She knows that the, that section 13 of the Facebook community standard prohibits videos that depict the murder of one or more people. When Chloe explains it to this class, she, she hears her voice shaking. Return to her seat, Chloe feels over an over-empowering urge to sob. Another trainee has gone up to review the next post, but Chloe, Chloe cannot concentrate. She leaves her room and begins to cry so hard that she has trouble breathing. No one tries to comfort her. This job 
she want this is the job she was hired to do. And then for a thousand people like Hillary moderating the f- Facebook content uh, at the Phoenix site and 15,000 content reviewers around the world is just one day in the office. <laughs> dude, how about that shit? Yeah. Can, that's horrifying. Know. Yeah, that's hor- Dude, yeah. <laughs> how much do these Facebook moderators make? Yeah, that's a good question, too. Yeah. I think like, I could, uh, get away with seeing some appalling shit. Hold yeah, for some money. Grooms is gonna sign up for watching snuff films. And, yeah. and what's crazy, yeah. So they like over the past three months, I've interviewed dozens of current former employees of this company that that cognizant. They all had to sign non disclosure agreements, so they can't say anything about any of this stuff. You could you could wear those uh, Homer Simpson yeah. glasses, the glasses that he puts on that are just his eyeballs. Yeah, and then just listen for anything, and just yeah. They say that the thing that sounds murdery. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds murderous. Yeah. Oh, man. That's pretty crazy. It's a key findings. Moderators in Phoenix will make just $28,800 per year, while oh, the average Facebook geez. employee has a total compensation of $240,000. Oh, yeah. That's even worse, man. Uh, can you, dude, that is ridiculous. Yeah, just sticking all these people in there, man, and just melting their minds. Oh, yeah. What a waste of life. Trauma-based mind control. Dude, dude seriously. While they're doing it. Yeah. I'd yeah. say just get away. Go live in the forest instead. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Here's another part. Uh, the moderators told me it's a place where conspiracy videos and memes that they see each day gradually lead them to embrace fringe news. Oh, is that us? Man. Yeah. Probably, uh, dude. Uh, our, 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 speaking of memes, yeah. Article Thirteen is official in the in the EU. That means they Uh-oh. cannot, they can't post memes. They can't look at memes if you live in what? the EU. Seriously? Yeah, dude. yeah memes are legal. <laughs> memes are legal in the EU. <laughs> Words and text. Official. What are newspapers gonna do? Yeah. Dude, I, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. I think it's because AI can't read memes. Oh, the big yeah. Man, man, it's a way we can co- communicate with each other without AI being able to interpret it. You mean like face to face or on paper? <laughs> no, through the yeah. internet. Nobody communicates no. face to face mean, anymore. You've got phones everywhere. Come on. <laughs> because well, it's but, because it's way too context based. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Is like that what the meme is? It it brings together way too many elements of information with really obscure kind of references. Like yeah. the words mean four or five different things mm-hmm. and the picture means as many different things. And they're all working in different combinations with each other, depending on what's going on and like when it was posted in the current political climate. So the meaning of it kind of shifts a little bit. Magic. Which, uh, yeah. It, it's just a very complex sort of communication method. I, I could see how a, how an AI would have problems dealing with that unless it was really, really good. And it was able to, a big brother doesn't like that. that. And then yeah. a meme, I, I don't know if it was good enough. I think a meme would be his preferred method of communication <laughs> for the same reasons. Here you go, Felix. One auditor walks the floor promoting the idea. The earth is flat. <laughs> a former employee told me that he's begun to question certain aspects of the Holocaust. Another former employee told me that he has mapped every escape route out of his house and sleeps with a gun in, at his side and said he believes 9-11 was no longer a terrorist attack. <laughs> sign, sign me up. <laughs> oh, man. Chloe cries for a while in the break room and then, then, and then in the bathroom and then begins to worry that she's she is missing too much training. <laughs> she has been frantic for a job when she she had been frantic for a job when she applied as a recent college student with no other immediate prospects. Starbucks. Yeah, when she becomes a full time moderator, she'll make fifteen bucks an hour. Yeah, it's four dollars more than minimum wage. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Yes. Yeah, so. Yeah, here's the main things out of this whole. Yeah, so that was the 28 grand a year. In stark contrast to the perks lavished on Facebook employees, team leaders, micromanaged content moderators, every bathroom break. Two Muslim employees were ordered to stop praying during their nine minutes per day allotted wellness time. Uh, nine minutes. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's, nine yeah, minutes. Yeah. What do you do? Tri- I, I I worked at a call center for six years, and we had two fifteen minute breaks. Yeah. And then over the course of the month, you could yeah. uh, 
you had to be like 90% uh, or 95, some percent like uh, adherent to, you know, seat time. And you could Dude. like, you could fudge it a little and like, you know, that kind of thing, but they kept track of it. You sign in and two sign in. 15 minute breaks a month. Was that what, what did no. you work for Amazon? <laughs> two, two 15, 10 to 15 minute breaks per day. Per month. Wow. Holy per crap, shift. dude. Yeah. No, well, that's your shift. I'm that's saying what shift. people can expect oh from life. If I didn't work, well, I didn't work Never. one day a month. Uh, I got you. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. That I only worked one day a month? A no. call center. No, no, no. A f- one 15 minute break a month. Damn. Damn. Dude, this That's is harsh. insane. Dude, this is There's a game so you're much. losing your mind. Yeah. Dude, this place would, I would want to shoot myself. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, and, work. Employees can be fired after making just a handful of errors in a week. And those who remain live in fear of, form, of former colleagues returning to seek vengeance. One man spoke who started bring, uh, bring yeah, one man who spoke with, who we spoke with started bringing a gun to work to protect himself. Uh, employees have been found having sex inside stairwells and room, <sighs> any room reserved for lactating mothers nice. in, in what one employee yes. describes as bo- trauma bonding. Yeah. Trauma bonding. Yeah, That's what the trauma floor is. They're out there just fucking brains out everywhere they can. Yeah. Oh I, I, I'm I'm uh, I'm imagining uh, like a Mark Zuckerberg portrait in the hallway, and there's like yeah, and the, holes and in the eyes, and like there's people standing behind the bent over, and his dude just railing. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like, that's no, 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 no. horrifying, yeah. horrifying. Yeah. They're horrifying. spying. Zuckerberg's spying on you behind oh. the, the portrait. Moderators cope with seeing traumatic images and videos by telling dark jokes about committing suicide, then smoking weed during breaks on to numb their emotions. Moderators are r- routinely high at work. Dude, I'm not a moderator, and that's my yeah. life. I don't yeah. understand. Yeah. That. I don't. I literally really high, and then having to watch this shit. I yeah. can't imagine that. That's, that's that would horrible. make me. That would make me feel like crap. Oh my god! That's I gotta tell you, that's that's brainwashing. Right. They yeah. like encourage them to get high yeah. and then watch all this. Yeah, this traumatic programming. Yeah, stuff. employees are developing PTSD like symptoms after they leave the company and no longer able to, to are, are no longer eligible for any support from Facebook or cognitive, the cognizant. Yeah, and yeah, so those are the man. That, yeah, that sounds that sounds terrible. Can we? Yeah. We're done with that, man. That was my uh, yeah. like, insanity art, uh, yeah, article. So basically, a big, big know. surprise: big tech companies forcing people to do horrible shit. <laughs> like, yeah, oh man, yeah. God, um, yeah, they just—they need to keep the internet uncensored. Let's go back to called, the let's go back to the good old days. That's called a dystopia. Uh, you know, we're not cleaning the ocean. You know, we're not sterilizing. Uh, you know, pastures anywhere. Just bits the of internet. Bites. The internet is a free space. It is a free space. It should be a Let free space. Let it be space. what it is. Yeah, it was a better time. I'd say back in the early early two thousands. Yeah, was, I'm talking. I'm talking hamster dance. Hamster dance. Yeah, give some hamster dance. Yeah, <laughs> come on, <laughs> bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> I miss those. Oh, days. Man. dude, Felix, man, yeah, you totally ought to do. You only. You totally ought to do a knockoff of the hamster dance. A hamster dance song. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking that's, of jams, that's, you got you, you got a jam. Now. You got a jam this week, Felix? I got a song for you guys. You ready oh, for it? Dude, yeah, let's wait. do it. We'll, we'll take five. Come back for second half of show. I'm going to go get my new Apple card to pay with uh, 3% cash back. When? <laughs> during during my performance? That's, that's, that's their new thing, dude. They're coming out with credit cards. Of course they are. Yeah. <clears throat> that was one of their big announcements yesterday. They're up to their eyeballs and money to loan out. They have a oh, huge totally, cash. Yeah. So the yeah, Apple service yesterday, uh, also it's most interesting, a credit card aptly called the Apple card with both physical and digital versions that give you up to 3% cash back. The product is on the surface, a way for Apple to sell its brand on a, uh, another everyday ob- object like you already own, but beneath the, the veneer of the titanium credit card with the Apple logo on it, the company is clearly charting out its post, Post iPhone future, one in one in which service reigns supreme by follow by the following formula we've never quite seen attempted before. Yeah, so they're going for it, dude. Yeah, Apple credit card. 
<laughs> yeah, man. They decide they decided it needed needs a traditional pr- product even one with dubious moral baggage of, of a credit card to promote Apple pay while the digital wallet and payment platform is growing fast. It is still used by less than half of all global iPhone users and even less in the U S. So just as Apple sees compete sees com- competing with Netflix and large cable companies as the part of its future yeah so they're creating their own tv shows just like netflix and all that uh and paying top dollar for hollywood talent the company no longer sees upending the status quo in payments to, through uh, uh payments as a viable path for apple pay so yeah they're gonna they need all that cash man to get out like tom cruise and shit to do their uh Apple shows or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. What do you got for us, Felix? Yeah, we'll take that guy you said you got to take off. I have to pull the ripcord. Oh, well, no. thanks for joining us, buddy. Later, dude. <laughs> you didn't see that guy. Wait, wait, you don't, don't want to hear my song? <laughs> I'm going to listen. Okay. Thanks. This might be, uh, <laughs> this one goes out to um, Jerry and that guy maybe you'll get some nostalgia points with this one. Oh, you know i love you cliff <laughs> thank you and um it's a song by donovan the name of the song is season of the witch nice and Ooh. i dedicate this song to all the good witches out there all y'all good witches <clears throat> out there this one goes out to you wicked witch of the east the, not, not the wicked ones <laughs> You guys hear guitar? Oh, yeah. Up a little bit. Down a little bit. Okay. I, I mean, I'm just, I was just coming up <laughs> I louder. Know. No, you're, you're coming. Oh, okay. Here. Well, then you're good again. Okay. This one's by Donovan. If you want to mute down, that'd be nice. Okay. Thanks. Enjoy. This one goes out to, to, to Lamb in the chats, too. Here we go. Ready? Look out my window Many people to see And when I look in my window So many different people to be That is strange Sure is strange To pick up every stitch, you got to pick up every stitch. You got to pick up every stitch. <laughs> Must be the season of the witch. Yeah. Must be the season of the witch. Yeah. When I look over my shoulder, what do you think I see? Summer kept a looking over his shoulder. His shoulder at me, and he's strange, so very strange. You got to pick up every stitch, you got to pick up every stitch. Beat me. 
takes her out to make it rich. Oh no, must be the season of the witch. Must be the season of the witch. Yeah, must be the season of the witch. great that was, that was great. awesome well done well done yeah. uh, that was insane that was so good oh man that was good oh dude i just about fell to the floor when you when you screamed i'm rich bitch was <laughs> oh yeah, my god the timing was perfect on that. oh my little. god it's a little oh nice, yeah. nice. oh yeah he was i, I thought I, I, I saw that i heard the organ yeah it's a reed organ oh my god <laughs> I used to play music back in the day, so yeah, I have an nice. appreciation for that. <laughs> oh, That's yeah. a real easy one. That's a little two chord, two chord deal. We had a little uh, little synchronicity in the chat rooms. Uh, BB was about to post that song "Seasonal Witch" on Twitter, and she's been listening. And like right before you started playing it, so that that that's insane. I that's knew it was cool. going to happen. Hey. <laughs> Synchro City, dude. Yeah. <clears throat> They're everywhere. They're flying around everywhere. They're everywhere, like shit birds, flightless shit birds. Yeah, flightless, flightless. shit birds. <laughs> that was a great expression. I think I'm gonna hold on to that one. <laughs> it's like uh, Pluto's Republic. Pluto's Republic. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you, Grimsnake, you remember that last week when you, were, uh, you said something Pluto? about Pluto? Yeah, Plato. Pluto. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah Pluto. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like something Grimsnake would do. <laughs> And you also mentioned you're kind of like Jesus, how you, you no one knows what you did from 18 to 30 years old. Yeah, it's just, it's gone. <laughs> Those years are just gone. 
Very mm-hmm. Christ-like. What the fuck? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I don't remember large swathes, swaths of my childhood. No, oh, dude, me, me neither. neither. Me yeah. neither. That's why I'm always like worried to get a memory regression. There's entire chunks that I have just no memory whatsoever. Mm-hmm. No doubt. The only yep. time I, yeah, like, do you, I, I feel that like when I was older, like I'd go back to my parents, like I'm saying when I, as I'm older, uh, I haven't done it in, you are old. in a decade, dude, but gone through the photo album. That's the only way, oh, like, yeah. I know what I did when I was a kid. <laughs> like, serious, I don't remember any of that shit. Yeah. Like there's pictures of it. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> okay. I can remember the layout of every building that I was in though. Right. Which is weird. <laughs> like I, I can house. remember the layout of it yeah. so well that I can like walk around in it in my head, but I can't remember anything that happened inside of it. I, I have dreams all the time of being in my friend's uh, house and I'm there at his house and there's always these like little secret passages that I never knew about behind walls. I, dude, I, I have <laughs> so dreams. many, <laughs> so many dreams like that where I'm at, uh, I'm in familiar locations, but it's like a bizarro world. Hmm. Like it's, it's, a, it's the same, oh, same environment. One dream yeah. thing I meant, I, I think we talked about it before, but um, I, uh, my, my what my wife was handing me a piece of paper you know how like like you're not supposed to be able to read shit in your dream like i could not read it i'm like move it closer move it closer i can't read it i can't read i kept saying that like in my head all the time like like it so i know like we're maybe we're talking about remote viewing in uh like an out of body or whatever you know type thing where you're able to read things and I could not read it this time for some reason. I don't know. Like I, that's the first time I've recalled in a long time of, of a dream where it like shocked me. And I was like, I can't read it. I can't read it. I can't read it. Like, so I don't know what that means, but that's what happened. Who knows, man, that is weird though, that you can't read in dreams. Jerry, have you in any of your Nox Mente guests, has any of them said that they could read in dreams or has, has that ever come up? Yeah, absolutely. It's something we actually ask about. We also ask if they if they can smell, if it's color or black and white, those kind of things. We always collect that data. Um, mm. It's like half and half. Really? We've been, um, crazy. we got new curtains in our bedroom and they're super see-through. So at night there's this, just all kinds of just light coming through. Uh, you got street lights? I, I, yeah. And I, I, I wear like a, I'll wear like a winter hat over my eyes. And it's nice and cozy on my head and I block it out. But my wife just finally got like sick of it coming in. And I'm like, yeah, you're going to get a lot better night of sleep. If we don't have this, all this light coming in through the, the curtains. Wait, 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 wait. So you sleep like the, uh, the kid from the Cosby kid show where yeah, he like had that. the hat that was completely down his face. Just a big, huge winter hat over my eyes. But then what happens is it falls off and then I have like total crazy you know, well, I, here's the thing. Like I have all, all kinds of night terrors where I always like look over and I see my wife and she's either like in a costume or she's a corpse <laughs> or oh, man, some weird like thing in my mind. And I'm like the biggest line that I'll say to her in, and I haven't had a big flare up in a while with these night terrors. I'll say, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Mm-hmm. And she'll have to like calm me down. Oh, but wow. I think because it's not dark in our room and if it was dark and I woke up and it was just dark. Yeah, you wouldn't right. be seeing shadows that are tricking your brain. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be like my mind wouldn't be making up all these mm-hmm. weird little um, images with her like the, her form. Sorry to hear that, man. Sounds to me like you need I, to get a bunch of black garbage bags and just put them over the window. <laughs> well, I think we're gonna take the curtains to a tailor. Black curtains. Mm-hmm. We create some get go to a tailor like a real tailor and have them sew them up. Mm. Nice. Or use nanotubulars. It absorbs carbon, all the light. Carbon, carbon fiber. fiber. Jinx. Carbon hey. fiber. I said it first. Uh, carbon fiber drapes. <laughs> <laughs> They're lightweight and aerodynamic. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a good idea. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah I don't think I've ever I don't think I've ever read in a dream. I've seen paper with writing on it that I mm-hmm. recognized as writing that was it was just too far away in the dream for me to realistically read it. And in the context of the dream, I felt like I shouldn't actually go try to read it. Right. I was more or less lucid mm. as it was happening, but it, 
the narrative of what was happening was so compelling that I, I didn't want to deviate it, deviate from it at all. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, it was a note that some entity had handed to uh, someone who's my teacher, my teacher. So I felt like I wasn't supposed to read what was on the, on the paper. Mm. Um, but I could like kind of see that, that there was writing on the paper. It wasn't like moving around or it wasn't undecipherable. It was clearly readable, but I was like, Oh, I shouldn't look at it. Uh, so I, I guess I had the opportunity to read. Have you uh, seen clocks? Have you read time? I read Is time. that a book? <laughs> no, the time. <laughs> I don't think I've, I've never like done that. Digital yeah. clock. No, no, not, not <clears throat> like, not on a time face, uh, but I have actually like seen kind of uh, different time zones within the dream, like sensing a, a passage of time that was consistent within the dream world um, because the sun changed positions. So what happened was in, in the dream is a very, very, very vivid. So I went to sleep and I woke up in kind of like an Italian villa on the outskirts of this Italian villa um, or maybe like a town center almost kind of. And there's a big fountain and there's, it's kind of on these gently sloping hills and there's kind of like a churchy thing up at the, up at the highest one. And then there over on one side, there's some um, like shops and stuff. And so I, I kind of start walking over to the shops and I'm pretty much, lucid it's it's vivid enough to where i feel like i'm lucid but i'm kind of drawn to do things and so i'm walking towards these shops and i get to the shops and i i realize that one of them is like a like a old school tavern kind of thing so i go into the tavern and sit down and i sit there for a second and then some kind of just like a, a lady comes and sits with me can't remember exactly what she looks like. And she starts talking to me and she tells me that some people have gone missing. Oh, weird. And I'm like, and I'm like, okay, what do you mean? And she's like, it's really hard to explain. I said, okay, well do your best. You know, and I'm like, can you just yeah, tell me what the hell is going on? Right. She says, okay. Um, she's speaking in Italian. No, she's not. We're, uh, I, I, the conversation is essentially, telepathic it's not really words it's like she's looking really hard at me um and i can just tell what she's wanting me to to understand mm -hmm. and it, it's kind of like her her voice is in my head but instead of a voice it's like another stream of memories that you recognize as somebody else's and oh, so it, it makes it's, sense yeah yeah and so that that's kind of what the yeah. vibe is and I need, to, I need to put your terminology coming out of my mouth. <laughs> like formaggio. Yes. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, we, we need to unite. If we could all unite our brains somehow <laughs> we need to, to share or, information. We need to formaggio the words. Formaggio. Formaggio. Words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she's uh, cheesing these words into my brain, if you will. Um, so what she tells me is that the group of people that's kind of in this bar and around this area, they at some point created this. It's like a, a almost like a piece of software, not like we would understand as software, but kind of like software. Hmm. And it exists. It existed at first, uh, within the subconscious minds of a few of the people who are the beginners of this experiment. Makes sense. Yeah. And one person at a time could use this world as it was using the subconscious of the other people who were linked into it. So it was essentially using these people's minds as the space that it was projecting into, but only one person could use it at a time. But somehow things went wrong and a bunch of them got linked and sucked into it all at one time. Mm. And, and so they're all trapped in this world and it had essentially come to use the entire rest of the population's minds <laughs> as the world that it was operating in. It reminds me of the bar and the Holy Mountain. Yeah. I, I have, it, 
it, it reminds me of tons of shit, but this is yeah, what yeah. she was telling me. It's like, so That's cool. we're all trapped in here. It's not really real. Uh, it's kind of real, but we're all trapped in here. But the thing is, we've had kids while we are in here. Oh, weird. So no, what, my God. what are it's they? Like a like, DMT are they trip that's gone wild. Dude. Right. Right. Like, yeah, you leave yeah. the whole live a whole entire life. Like. Yeah. And, and so <laughs> that was their that was their like main they had two main questions. First one, what is gonna happen to our kids? And like what are they really? Mm. Um and the second question was uh, some people went missing from their group because they tried to find a way out. Um, what happened, they think, uh, these people just disappeared, but the people that got left behind think that they found a way out uh, into some dimension and now they're stuck somewhere else. Oh, <laughs> so, man. It sounds so, like, a, like a Black Mirror episode. A Black Mirror yeah. in the Nox Mente uh, server. Yeah, and so this is like, the, it, she wants my help. But she knows that I can't help her because I don't know shit. But she knows that I know people who can help. <laughs> so, yes, yes. And, and so I'm like, okay, so this is the deal. She, she says, okay, well, now I want to go take you out to where this happened. And so this is where I go to that cabin in the woods and see that fourth dimension stuff. Um, and, and after that kind of cabin, cabin in the woods, woods thing, I come back to the, to the villa and then she's like, okay, well, can you go get help? I'm like, yeah, I know exactly who you need. And at that moment, I wake up in my bed and I'm like, oh man, that was crazy. Uh, I need to go to the bathroom. And I get up, I go to the bathroom and I go back to sleep and I wake back up in the, wow. in the villa, like right Jeez, where I left them. Man. But I have my uh, teachers with me and I take them to this, I, I take them to meet the, these people and everything. And that's where the thing with the note happens. So that, that was the kind of backstory to be reading in the dreams. The coolest dream I've ever had. Almost that's awesome. Cool. That is insane. Yeah. Did you Dude, write that's... this uh, in the Nox Mente server? No. No. Too long. Uh, I've. Oh, yeah. Were you taking? I chances? swear I've heard this before, but obviously I, I must must. I might have written something about it in in Nox Mente or, or mentioned okay. it somewhere else. But that's the. Uh, Were you taking chances? What? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, so, yeah. That thing. So I was. I was uh, stone sober. What was this cabin like? Cabin you in don't the mind woods. Me asking. The, yeah. the cabin in the woods. It looks uh, like a shed or almost an outhouse. It right. has from the outside. It's small. Uh, oh, it's like the Home Depot commercial where they open up the porta potty and it's like this Taj Mahal yeah. bathroom. Yeah, inside. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like a TARDIS <laughs> kind of vibe, right? It's bigger on the inside, sort of thing. Right. Yes, but it's yes. not necessarily that it's bigger on the inside. It's just that. It, each of each face of the inside is projecting into another dimension. So it's <laughs> right. Like, God. <laughs> yeah. God. Oh, I'm, I'm well, for whatever reason, I'm, I got to, well, are you still in the middle of this? No, go ahead. Do you guys ever read the book house of leaves? I've heard no. of it, but I never read it. It's real, like involved. It's one of those intricate, real long books and it has to do with a house and it all starts with the house and the guy that's living in there, or he might be working in there. He notices that the internal dimensions of this house don't match up with like the outer uh, dimensions, just measurement wise. So he starts just like poking around and he find, like tries to figure out if he can get in, in between spaces in, in the house and ends up going inside like this portal or whatever and down these stairs and into this labyrinth. And every time he goes into it, he goes a little further into it. He, you know, it's almost like his soul, his soul gets like drenched and it gets, he gets more and more evil kind of comes into him or more and more just like bad luck. And there's, there's like this documentary aspect to the way that it's written. And there's like little newspaper clippings and like, uh, um, what else? Uh, it's good. It's a long read, but people say that it's one of those books where you like, you read it and it just like, you almost get, you could get cursed if you finished reading it kind of thing. But I read it all. Mm -hmm. I didn't get cursed. Sutter came. Mm -hmm. I think it's called House of Leaves. Look at it. I, I read it. It was good. A friend, of, a friend of mine gave it to me. Yikes. And then I was going to say, when you talk about dreams, and uh, I woke up one time and wrote on a piece of paper on like, a, we have a little uh, on our fridge, the little um, grocery list you can write down. And I wrote down, I woke up and for some reason I was in a haze and it was dark and I wrote it and I didn't even see myself writing it, but I wrote down E and like ampersand E and G Maxwell. 
And I've like been telling my wife that someday this was this is a prophecy. It'll make sense. Oh, uh, uh, I, I can prophecy. I, I can make sense of it right now for you. Yeah. Do you want? Do you want to? Yeah. Not, sure. Electromagnetism and gravity. See Maxwell. Whoa. What the? Like uh, the scientist guy? Yeah. James Clerk Maxwell, the guy who did the original equations, not the edited ones for electromagnetism that Oliver Heaviside has. Uh, you go look at Tom whoa. Curtis. No, go look at Tom <laughs> Curtis. He talks about this, man. Like the scalar component of what Maxwell originally did explains all this other phenomenon, including gravity and everything else. If you, if, what the if, fuck? If they, if they really unpack it together, right? So if I see E and G Maxwell, that just says to me, oh, electromagnetism and gravity. Maxwell. God, I, I wish we were just, I wish we were on video because Felix, your reaction was the best thing I ever saw. Yeah. There's so much excitement. Yeah. <laughs> I've been holding on to this paper for the longest time and I was thinking I was going to meet someone with the first initial E and the first initial G and their last name. Oh, maybe yes. you will. You heard it in the podcast somewhere and it was stuck in your head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I took, I, I yeah. took like a philosophy, philosophy of like physics or whatever in college and this is like a long time ago that's some of that stuff might like pour it into my head subconsciously and i had this dream like four years ago weird that's crazy that's wild yeah Man. oh yeah <clears throat> wow yeah that's uh, that's neat uh, the <laughs> when i had my first uh, dmt trip i i came back from wherever the fuck that was and just <laughs> immediately scribbled down on a piece of uh notebook paper respect ourself like o u r s e l f one word respect ourselves huh and then i got really happy because i wasn't dead and i i ran in the parking lot <laughs> <All right. laughs> so how, how many times have you uh, done dmt uh this was i, I did that stuff maybe a uh, more than 10 years ago, probably. Right. And it was... Uh, talk, your, your Damon was communicating with you. You're saying, oh, God. Let's respect uh, yourself. So, yeah, I, that was, I probably did it oh, maybe six okay. or eight times or something like that. Really? Man, <laughs> something I've always wanted to try. It was oh, um, mostly incomprehensible really? to my experience. Yeah, the first time was uh, really terrifying. It felt like... I, I took this hit of this really g- gross stuff. It tastes like baby shit and plastic. Oh, right. I like yeah, that. like burning plastic and shit. And so it That's just it's the, na- the nastiest thing you can possibly imagine. So I take a big lung full of this stuff. And I have my headphones in. Because at the time, I was like a, a heady kind of cat. So I was used to taking psychedelics. And so I, I go to my iPod. I'm going to hit play on Tool. I think I'm going to oh, have no. this great trip. He's well, went down I, I, the I hole. Hit play. I hit play. <laughs> and as my finger is coming off of the, uh, <laughs> of the iPod, I start to feel like my entire body is shitting itself. It's a really weird feeling. Oh, God. And everything, dis- everything dissolves, and I feel like I'm being accelerated out of a rocket at a million miles an hour. I hear this god-awfully loud sound. And the next thing I remember, I am coming to where I just right in the seat where I was. And I don't remember anything. Like my mind has been completely wiped. Like Uh, absolutely 100% down to nothing. I don't know who I am, where I am, what I am, not breathing, not anything. And so there's a state of perfect nothing that seems to go on for an eternity, but almost as quickly feels like uh, a burning in my lungs and this kind of panic as I realized that breathing is a thing that I should be doing. Oh, and so wow. I, <laughs> I should breathe at this moment in time. Right. Yeah. And so that, that kind of occurs to me at the same time that my memories of my past come flooding back to me all at once. So oh. I, I have this kind of emergence into, into like self-awareness where I feel like I'm dying because all like my life is flashing before my eyes and I feel like I'm gasping for air. None of this is happening in reality. It's just <laughs> happening in the split second in my mind. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and immediately after that, I look to my right and I see three invisible entities. It makes no sense, but I see three invisible entities standing next to me. And I pick up on the conversation that I had been having with the moments before on the other side. And the substance of that conversation was respect ourselves. And so I'm like, oh, I won't forget. And so I, I get up and I <laughs> write it down on the piece of paper. And I'm so filled with the joy of not being dead 
because that's what I thought I was <laughs> yeah. moments before. And I just run and do laps in the parking lot. And it was, <laughs> that was one. Mm. The other stuff was. And boom goes the dynamite. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, man. I, yeah, that, that's, some, that is. Whew. Yeah, that's so that's. Awesome. I mean, the, like, does is it like a heart racer? You know, like, does it like get your blood I, I pressure felt, going, dude? It's your motor, motor, your motor. I don't running? think it's probably anything that we could compare to any other. It's drug your motor boat. Like, that's just. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, one thing I can compare it to. Have you ever uh, maybe it, like held held your breath in a in kind of a weird way and let it go and you feel like you're dissolving? Uh, like, that, that's like how I did. Over? That's how mm-hmm. I Anyone started got that, doing the like, um, extreme feeling of lightheadedness. Oh yeah. That's what I, how I yeah. tried doing like uh an out of body mm-hmm. like the uh I guess it is like an out of body thing astral, like, projecting. Had, astral projection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. how I would do almost astral projection but it was like heavy breathing in in yeah in uh <laughs> Holotropic breathing? Uh, just yeah, like it, uh, I you I would I would breathe and then hold it for like okay yeah. twenty seconds, then exhale, uh, in the same pattern. So yeah. yeah, and then eventually you feel not you you it like it's just it's an odd feeling, dude. Like you're saying yeah, and and then mm-hmm. and yeah. then. Boom! I get like sucked right down into whatever. Yeah, that, does it, that's how uh, it happens. Yeah, does it get your yeah. go back le tepe? Go back le tepping? Yeah, it does. Whatever that means, it does that. <laughs> it, it absolutely <laughs> does that. <laughs> I, just, I just came up with that. <laughs> it, uh, so, yeah, I, I think I could probably describe it in terms of that. Right? It's the the feeling okay. that you get. Um, it's like this extreme buzzing. Yes. Yeah. It's it's a really intense feeling of buzzing combined with the feeling of at f- uh, falling in the sense that the traditional support that you feel for your mind is not there. Yeah. Um, and so when you have that sensation of falling in the in the uh, breath work, it it's not really that you're falling; it's that you feel like you're falling. That indicates something else is happening. So it's like yeah. that, but sh- but kind of at the same time. Instead of falling backwards, you get rocketed to the sun. Oh my god! Yeah. That's what it feels like. <laughs> and, and, okay. And the sound, the sound is roughly similar because if you get one of those really powerful breath experiences, um, yeah. it sounds like uh, an enormous ocean. At the same time, there's a really powerful ringing, and so it's similar to that. It's just a million times louder because it's Amazing. dissolving your connection to your body. That's crazy. What's yeah. that? Uh, what's that painting above your head? Uh, it's just some ladies bailing hay. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is, man. <laughs> Women hard at work. Yeah, I, I like to I like to look at it when I drink tea because it reminds me of my life in general. Just tedious work. Is there a yeah. secret secret map on the back? <laughs> you <need> a decoder. <laughs> in a way, in a way, there is, but it's on the. It's not on the back of the painting. It's in a, a higher dimension encoded by the painting itself. <laughs> it was funny. That's funny you mentioned that because I just was watching an episode, season three of uh, Legends of Tomorrow, the time travel show. And uh, they get uh, two of the character or three of the characters get they're They're already in a, in a uh, time frame that isn't theirs. And then they're, they they go to do something, and then a time entity like sucks these three into another place out of. Out, so now the rest of the group has no clue where they went. So they're like, "Fuck! How are we gonna do this?" The missing. They find out left. that it's like 1942, and they're in the same building. And then they remembered like it, like there was all this shit storm everywhere inside that room. So they're like, "Oh, dude!" They looked over and they saw the painting on the wall. And they're like, well, well, what if we write a note and stick it on the back of the painting? And like, the one guy's like, yeah, let's say they don't decide to redecorate in the next 80 years or whatever. And, and yeah, they tried putting a note behind the painting. I don't remember. And I fell asleep. Like, <laughs> so I need to finish that episode of like what happened. But uh, one of I the, wrote, I wrote that episode. You want to hear? Yeah, it was, that's that's pretty crazy. That, that, dude, this is like Synchro City tonight. Same with the chats. Like the chats are blown up. Synchros and it's just crazy. 
uh, watcher, why'd you ask me what my favorite number was in the beginning of the show? Oh, there was just um, something to do with uh, fish, the number fish, or sorry, oh. the, the fish and the number 14. So I was curious if it was 14. What's a, what's what is what does fish have to do with fourteen? Um, okay, so there is. Well, have you guys read the? Um, Probably not. Tracy Twineman. Uh, no. New article. Okay. No, well, I saw it got posted about, in our chats, but I didn't read it. Uh, I I think Soros has his hands up and he's got a fish on one hand and a fourteen on the oh, other. Oh no, that's oh, John Podesta. That's oh, Podesta. Or, sorry, yeah, Podesta. Podesta. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. Uh, but I just looked at the photo and then I, I knew 14 and the fish go together because of uh, the Osiris myth. Um, and he was cut into 14 pieces by uh, set and mm. then spread out everywhere. And Isis looked for him, found 13 pieces, but could not find the 14th piece. His dick. It was his dick. And <laughs> but she did know where it was. It got eaten by a fish. So the dick was what was the fish's name? Fish I don't know the name of the fish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is, that where, is that where Pen Fifteen comes from? <laughs> <laughs> Pen Fifteen Club? Yeah. No, but she made a golden dick for him, resurrected him, resurrected him, obviously, and then got impregnated by him. And what then, can I find a woman like that? <laughs> did you guys yeah. all quit? Uh, did you guys all quit vaporizing or what? No. No, I still vape. I don't. I was listening that they together. want to raise the age in a certain. I don't know if it was a certain state, but uh, to twenty one, like to buy any nicotine product, like, um, including vape shit or whatever, because it's all because it's highly marketed to the youth with yeah. their tasty flavors. Honestly, though, man, and. Uh, you can't put age limits on things if you don't want people to use them. People are going to use shit if they want to use it. They're going to get it if they want to get it. You can't restrict things. It's bullshit. Cock rings, though. Yeah, cock rings. It's all about, you know, you got to gauge <laughs> those things up. <laughs> oh, so, wait, were, were you still talking about the 14 and the fish? Sorry. Yeah, well, she probably made, uh, yeah, the cock was a golden cock with a cock ring on it for sure. Man, golden <laughs> cocks. <laughs> golden cocks. It's like Speaking the, it's like the John cocks, and Lorena Bobbitt story. You know, there's, another, there's another Egyptian story that I find hilarious. It's uh, the battle between Set and Horus. So there's this feud going on between the sword the fighting people. without swords. Well, yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. So, yeah. um, Set is jealous of Horus because he's popular and oh, you know, people like him. Oh, I and uh, so Set <laughs> invites him to this party where he gets him to drink more than he thinks he can handle, and uh, then he seduces him and brings him to his bed, and then has his way with him, except Horus is pretending to be drunk and then catches the semen instead of having it injected in him. (laughs) And then he takes it to his mom, Isis, and tells her what happened. And she's like, well, he throws it into the river. And then she is like, this is what you do. You masturbate and put your semen on his favorite food, which is lettuce, and then feed that to him. And so... (laughs) <laughs> he ends up eating it and then they go to this tribunal where sets like uh, you know i have dominated horus or sorry yeah i've dominated horus and i think i should rule and then i think it's can't remember which god but maybe thoth uh calls up the semen of mm-hmm. set and then finds out that it's not <laughs> not in horus and it's actually in a lake and then he calls up the semen of horus and it's in set and then he's like, well, you got fucked, right? So <laughs> Horace won. <laughs> but yeah, it's a pretty sweet story. It's an interesting way to settle disputes, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so like primitive. Flat. Yeah, 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 it totally yeah, does. Yeah, it's your, your uh, what are they what are those tests you gotta do? Uh, yeah, it sounds oh, like a frat hazing. hazing for the hazing, yeah. <laughs> hazing. Yeah. What's that? 
I, I was thinking Drink of that. this. <laughs> <laughs> what's that uh grim six our resident south park uh guy what's the south park episode where the he makes chili for the the friend oh yeah scott tennerman yeah. when uh yeah because yeah when, when cartman made chili for uh for scott tennerman out of his own parents he killed his parents Dead and parents made him eat him. yeah <laughs> oh south park is such a great show it's gruesome awful but awesome <sighs> yeah. awfully how, awesome how are the new seasons have you guys watched Dude, they're, they're they're great they they're just they're constantly Sweet. nothing but gold. They, do they just have like a, a episode generator where they just like plug in words and? Oh, I just think Trey pa- Trey Parker and Matt Stone are the best the TV geniuses. writers. Yeah, dude, they're complete geniuses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of like us. I mean, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Even not, I got some so. news <laughs> for us to be joined in this effort. By one of those two courageous astronauts whose lunar module set down on the sea of tranquility. Ladies and gentlemen, would you mind getting on your feet and helping me to welcome and thank Apollo 11 astronaut Buzz Aldrin for a lifetime of service and heroism. What is this, what is this propaganda? Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm waiting for the remix, man. I can't hear it until it's the remix. We're right <laughs> yeah, after it just goes, Buzz! <laughs> So we're going back to the moon, James? Is that what's happening? Yeah, we're going back to the moon. To the moon, Sally. Yeah. 50 years ago, one small step for man became one giant leap for mankind. But now's come the time for us to make the next giant leap and return American astronauts to the moon, establish a permanent base there, and develop the technologies to take American astronauts to Mars and beyond. Well, it's not really a great leap, is it? It's the same That's, fucking leap it was last it is, time, guys. It's, it's the same That's leap. The next giant leap. So they're called astronauts, and when you take down your pants and show someone your ass, it's called mooning someone. <laughs> yeah, oh, that interesting. oh my god, Words. that's so true. <laughs> Words are magic. <laughs> if, this is, hey, if this is an, if this is like the next great leap, is that a tacit admission that they didn't make the fucking leap the first that's time? That's exactly yeah. how I took it. <laughs> there's, the, there's, the, <laughs> yeah. there's the irony of it. Yeah. Uh, like, no, we could do it for real this oh, time. Oh, we're guys. gonna do it for real. Yeah. We already did this, bitch, with 1960s technology allegedly. Yeah, so, all these like, guys that have been up there. <laughs> but that's assuming that space is even so, real and they can make uh, it to the moon and it's no. not just a picture being no. projected. <laughs> it makes but, sense that even if they did know. go to the moon that they would have faked the pictures anyways. Mm-hmm. It, makes the, it makes the most sense out yeah. of anything. Yeah. Well, yeah, man, it was, it, it was oh, the height I, of the yeah. Cold War. They had to guarantee that it was going to be a success no yeah. matter what. Yeah, so the Soviets like, were doing similar things with yep. uh, faking, the action, faking the press footage that got released and actually doing the missions. Yeah, man. Yeah. They did. They got caught doing the same thing. So mm-hmm. I'm sure we did the same thing. A lot of fuckery. And then you know people are like, "But we could shoot lasers at the moon, and it pings back because they put mirrors on it and stuff." And it's like, you know, did they really though? <laughs> it's just a <laughs> fucking thing up there. Exactly. You're, you're pointing a laser in the sky, and it's bouncing back. It could just be the firmament. It could be. It could be. But could be a lot of things. But uh, could yeah, be the invisible yeah, UFO maybe. that's up there. Hey, Maybe. where are the stars? Or they have satellites orbiting at those exact points that they can bounce off of. Assuming satellites are real, just because that's <laughs> uh, I think all I mean, that shit's real. It's just in low Earth orbit. Yeah. Well, yeah. Arthur it could be. C. Clarke came up with the idea for satellites. All of everything that's in space writer. was was created by a science fiction writer. Pretty much. Mm. Well, God, no doubt, dude. <laughs> yeah. It... <laughs> Trying to, um, You're looking sleepy, James. No, I was just rubbing my eyes. Sorry. Uh, let's see here. I got a couple of things. If I can get, hopefully these these will link. But James, I was going to ask you. I'm, I'm actually kind of ramping up, uh, getting to my uh, album release here soon. Oh, let's do it. And uh, I was going to see if you could do the typography and maybe, of course, if I shoot a photo, you can like spiff it up. Yeah, man. <clears throat> Hell yeah! New Felix album, nice. You've probably heard all the songs. <laughs> probably. Um, let's see. I got one story. Yeah. Joe, Joe Rogan experience pulled down by media matters. Uh, yeah. Poor, well, poor Joe Rogan, you know? Yeah. Media matter. Media matters is they're bad. <clears throat> yeah. Cause matters. we were talking, well, we were talking about before the show started and, uh, 
it yeah uh it was just a site that was was uh posting a uh, youtube channel that was posting an interview when uh, joe rogan just was on alex jones's show and yeah like within three hours it got yank- youtube yanked it off of oh yeah man the, info wars yeah. isn't allowed on youtube that's a no-no yeah. <laughs> we can't let that yeah. we can't let that information getting out <laughs> it's dangerous to the public do you guys uh, want to play a theme song game? We, yeah, we, yeah. We'll, we'll close All out right. on the theme song game, James. That theme song game? game? Yeah. All right. What's the theme song game? How what do we play? Uh, it? uh, it's ten questions, and uh, I guess I'll 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 run it on my my computer here, and then we'll see what. How happens. do we buzz? How do we buzz in? Yeah. No, you just. Game? I think you just answer these, and then. Or, all right. I'll, oh yeah. How do we all do this? Uh, <laughs> let me think here. Okay, I'll do this real quick. I'll copy and paste this. Into oh, we could do it in the chat. Yeah, and uh, I'll put the chat here in the Zoom link if I can pop that open. Here we go. Uh, paste. So that that's the link. I mean, it's it's just a click through. I would imagine but, we all got to go to it. What you're making us? Yeah, go- sure. Why not? <laughs> I didn't sign up for that. Come on, you're making us do a test. Yeah. What if it's I get like questions, ma- dude? What if you got to like do ma- the thing, then it spits it out. It's what if like, I get like malware. I, yeah. Of course you will. That looks like it's got malware in it. I don't know. I don't know. It popped right up for me. Yeah, this is weird, uh, man. Do you have a list of goals that you're currently working on? Yes, no. Uh, uh, what is this, James? James, what did you bring to the show right now? <laughs> What's going on here? This is bullshit. I'm not doing this. Yeah, I don't trust okay. this. <laughs> Fine, whatever. What's your favorite color? Give you a personality. Yes. Yeah, this, personality. This, All right. That's exactly what this is. This is one of those yeah. data harvesting personality quizzes from Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's 10 questions. That's, yeah. I'm already on three. Finish the sentence. I am so ready to meet Mr. Wright. Finish school. Travel the world. Get laid. Yeah. Click. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it picked finish school for me. This My yes. computer's running slow. It's picking right. my own questions. This thing's asking me for my credit card number and my security code. <laughs> it, it <laughs> is. is this, yeah. My waist it's size. You yeah. would like me make your background. Uh, it just asked me for my, my waist size. I know. It just asked me for K-Dog's girlfriend's social security number, so I'm going to have to call her up and get it. <laughs> Friends would say you are a perv, a romantic, a go with the flow, too focused to worry about dating. What is this? Like a, a dating harvest? Yeah, a date date harvesting. Uh, I'm a go with the flow. I'm a go with the flow. <laughs> Keep so is, is this where we just fill in an online dating profile with Cruz? Uh, that's what I'm doing, yeah. In high school, which clique did you belong to? Uh I think None, it's called, I the think marching it's band, uh, choir. It's going to have everything it needs to clone you after this. Yeah, no doubt. Mm-hmm. You're an honor student. Uh, Swamp, Swamp I was, James. I was a nun. Uh, no, you are, you are you giving it like falsified information now? No, I, I, I speak the truth, dude. I James, think your theme James, songs. Are your parents mean, divorced? I don't think no. James can give falsified information. It's impossible. <laughs> There's your no such song. thing as falsified information. I just, I just don't. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it might, it might be wrong information, but it's not intentionally yeah, wrong. Totally. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, which would you man. rather be? Adventurous, settle down with the family, a stripper, career. <laughs> <laughs> stripper, uh, for stripper. Sure. I'm going. Put, put stripper, the stripper dude. down. Male stripper. All right. Ah, uh, dude. Uh, Wait. Let me I guess. Let me male guess. stripper, and it changed it to adventurous. I don't understand what's going on here. Uh, pick one shape: a triangle, square, or circle. Or you might got to calibrate your mouse. Hectagon. I'm going with hectagon. What? And it picked square. What is going on? <laughs> My screen's like jacking this thing off or something. Mal- malware. Which country we do I live in? I'm on question 10. Russia, Italy, good old America. I'm going to pick America, and if it sends me somewhere else, I'll be pissed. Will you guys right. do me a big favor and click on the link that I just put in the chat? Because this is what I feel like we are. Wait, is this a phishing scam? Are we no. rats no, abso- absolutely not. It's the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Got to go get a, go get a Bible. <laughs> my, my, okay, my theme song is uh, Family Guy. <laughs> 
this is the dumbest thing ever. Yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> this is a fa- this is a famous painting. It's about this the is uh, a great painting. Is it Santa Claus? Yeah. This is a great this is a great painting. The reply but, of the Zaporozhian Cossacks. <laughs> so this is uh, <clears throat> Sphincter say what? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah well it's, it's funny. Yeah, that's what they're doing. They're <laughs> replying to a Turkish sultan who has sent them <laughs> kind of <laughs> command, like they're 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 having a war and they've kind of broken up for the day, and the Sultan sends them this letter and basically like, You need to submit to me, I'm awesome and everything. Wow. And and these Cossacks, they're really warlike, but they they get this monk guy to like draft the letter for all of them because presumably they're probably not literate, and they're, they're all just right. having this, and they're super drunk. You can see it in the painting, <laughs> and so they're they're basically tag teaming this letter back to the Sultan, which is the funniest thing ever. <laughs> it says, "Oh Sultan, Turkish devil and damn devil's kith and kin, secretary to Lucifer himself." What the devil kind of knight art thou? Thou cannot slay a hedgehog with your naked ass. The devil shits and your army eats. Thou shalt not, thou son of a whore, make subjects of Christian sons. <laughs> we have no fear of your army. By land and by sea, we will battle with thee. Fuck thy mother. <laughs> yeah. Babylonian scullion, Macedonian wheelwright, brewer of Jerusalem, goat fucker of Alexandria, Swine herd of greater and lesser Egypt, pig of Armenia, Podolian thief, catamite of Tartary, hangman of the Camionets, and a fool of all the world and underworld, an idiot before God, grandson of the serpent, and the crick in our dick, pig snout, man's ass, slaughterhouse cur, unchristened brow, screw thine own mother. <laughs> Man, we're listening to the 2020 presidential debates right now. That's, <laughs> that's what this is going to be. <laughs> you see that dog at the bottom left there? It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, so, so this is this is the kind of political debate that was going on back in the day, right? So yes. this is what we have now. It's exactly it's it, except it's Twitter now. <laughs> what's that? Uh, what's the? Is that like a cherry on the top of the mountain up there? Yeah. <laughs> top right it looks like a cherry on top of yeah, the mountain. There's, like a, dude, there's so much to unpack in that one painting. Of those blow up balls. It's gonna roll down the mountain. That is a that's a pretty cool painting. Yeah, I like that. That's I want that on my you gotta wall. Gotta look at all the faces. The, he's so good with faces. Oh, yeah, yeah dude, one the, guy, just the joy. There's one guy. He's so drunk, and he has. You can tell he's been laughing so hard that he's almost dead. His face the, is like the red face guy right now. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. He's just he's so happy. Mm. And he just doesn't know what's going on. Santa, Santa Claus, hat on. I, dude. I was just gonna say Santa Claus. <laughs> there's Santa yeah. Claus in here too, and he's got a uh, scimitar. Yeah, <laughs> Santa Claus with a scimitar. Yeah, my kind of guy. Yeah. Oh, this is an amazing picture. So, someone posted a uh, something on Twitter, and it was a video of uh, some Russian guys in like a, I don't know where they were. They're in some room, and they're all kind of drunk, drinking vodka or whatever. And uh, this one guy is just off to the side, and he's trying to put a pair of sweatpants on like a sweatshirt, and he <laughs> keeps trying. And it's and someone put up a meme saying like, "This is like how I feel right now," something like that. But he like six or seven times he can't figure out why he can't get his head through the center of these sweatpants, and he keeps trying it again and again. It's pretty good. <laughs> like it's like uh, half like the Hoff trying to eat a cheeseburger all hammered on the fucking yeah. floor of his daughter's house. Yeah, it's pretty pretty <laughs> messed up. Oh, oh man! Want to play one more game? Like I'll give you one more game. <laughs> yeah, stranded, as long, as long, on a, stranded on an <laughs> island. Let's play that. It's, it's a not, team building exercise. It's a team building exercise? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Stranded on an island is a useful team building activity to help people get to know each other better. Hi, my name I is I know you guys so well already. Yeah, man. Unfor- uh, so uh, f- form groups of about five to 10 people and give the following instructions. Unfortunately, you will be relocated and stranded on a desert island for an indefinite amount of time. You may only bring one item to the island. And you only have a few minutes notice. What will you bring? What will you grab and run through your house real quick and bring? And uh, share with the group your object, why you chose it, and what you plan to do with it. One thing. One thing. <laughs> one thing. One thing. <laughs> one thing. You got like, like, you got like, I don't have my machete, man. Yeah. You're going with a machete watcher? Machete? Oh, yeah, you got one? I don't even I have one. Grab it. Yeah. Man, what would It'd I bring? It'd be pretty useful. Uh, hmm. Yeah. 
Do you bring in bells? Man. No. All right, so we got a machete. Uh, machete. Do we get so to far. coordinate with each other while? Yes, I was just thinking uh, that'd be good. Yeah. So, so the machete no. is covered. Like a big group call while this is going down. I'll well, bring then, a. I'll bring, I'll bring a harmonica. Just play you guys some music. Okay, I like that. Uh, that's nice and light. That's a good choice. Yeah. Mm. I'm going to bring... Hmm. Dude, that's tough. Hasty decision. I'm not good with it. Like, pimple pimple hey, cream. No. Yeah, you don't want pimple zits cream. on the island. Uh, Preparation H. Mm. Man, James... This is one of these where we need show prep beforehand. You no way. I, I came up with mine you real quick. You only got like a couple of minutes. You only got like two minutes to fix something. Yeah, we're taking a lunch that, break in 10 minutes. No. Yeah. No, you got you to. I mean, down to one minute. What are you going to grab, dude? Maybe, maybe, uh, oh my maybe God, like a what? book or something. A I mean, book. I feel like I feel like I'd, I feel like I'd want to read something if I'm what on kind an of island. Book? Man. Uh, man, stranded on an island. How how long we stranded for? Yeah, what are we talking? Uh, an here? indefinite amount of time. Oh, indefinite. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I'll either bring a mirror, a mirror, mm. or a harmonica, so I can look at my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, I got oh, nothing. I'm well, what kind out. of island is this? Uh, you know, uh, in a tropical area. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, each person will have a brief time to share their item and why it's important to them and what they plan to do with it. After everyone has shared, instruct the group to figure out how they can improve their chances of survival by combining these items in creative ways. Allow 10 to 15 minutes of brainstorming time and have each group uh, present their ideas. The book is pretty good because if we need to build a fire, I'm sorry, but, you know. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. it's great. You can read it, and then uh, you know, once you're finished reading it, you don't need it anymore. That's true. How how about this? Um, one person bring a boat frame. One person bring a boat <laughs> engine. I'm bringing the sail. Bring I'm bringing yeah, a sail in case of backup. Get away person. off this island. Yeah. <laughs> Never <laughs> getting the fuck out of here. Yeah, I like that. Off the island. Yeah. Yeah. That's good thinking. I don't want to be straight right. out good, yeah. Dude, yeah. if you just brainstorm the best idea, let's go home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The hell failed am I doing to- on the island? Question number one. How do I get off this fucking island? Mm. Number failed, two. Yeah. Failed, failed in the chat says he'll bring the weed. <laughs> yeah. And and fishing tackle. That's what you're grabbing, dude? Yeah. Dude, I'm, bringing, I'm bringing this uh, uh, eighth. eighth what if the weekend? island is amazing, though? Then we, and we have this boat. I know. That's yeah, we have the boat. Like, well, we can cruise yeah. around it. And, like, yeah, that'd be tours. cool. Yeah. We can offer tours yeah. and make money. Yeah, or you just break, <laughs> yeah. you make spears. You go spear fishing like a awesome, uh, awesome yeah, that'd, that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, I should, there, yeah I'll go grab my, tack, my tackle box. That's what I'll bring. Yeah, it, ha- it has <laughs> a knife. It has it has supplies in it. Yeah. So We, we should uh, end every show with this. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you bring to a desert oh, island? We should do a, a well, zombie yeah. one. Well, a yeah, we'll pick, we'll, pick a, one. we'll pick a different uh, itinerary or uh, idea. Object at the show. Every, yeah. <laughs> All right, so, that was fun. so so look forward to that for next week. Oh, yes. and I think Martian, you, you, your first thing you said you wanted to bring earlier was pimple cream. No, <laughs> yeah, I want to bring pimple cream. No, uh, no, it wasn't that. It was before uh, we started. You remember? I don't no. remember that. Oh, it was a flashlight. The, oh, the flashlight. <laughs> that's right. No, I said you wanted a to bring flashlight. Flashlight. Dude, yeah, I'll bring it. Yeah, flashlight. <laughs> yeah. Someone's got to bring it, guys. I forgot Ooh. about that. <laughs> Sloppy seconds on that yes. thing. Like, yeah, we can exactly. all share, and then we yeah, can man. give it to that Egyptian uh, fight guy yeah, for, to, uh, to use for him and his body. It's like, it's like a cum transplant. <laughs> we can make this work. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, uh, yeah, guys, this is, this is a fun time. What Jerry, who you got show. on Nox Mente tomorrow night? <clears throat> tomorrow we have uh, Eric Wargo, the... Um, He's the author of that book, a book called Time Loops, about oh, retro causality and yeah. time. Great Sweet. interview uh, with him on Radio Mysterio. So I'll drop it in Discord for our nice. But um, that'll be good. Really interesting, dude. It's going to be a good chat. Right on. Cool. It. Anybody else working on anything they want to plug? Uh, my album's coming out again here soon. Probably won't be for like a, two months from now. Sweet. I just booked a three day cruise. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. nice. You're always cruising. 
Yeah, that's okay. right. We need to do a cruising with steak. Cruise. <laughs> cruise. Yeah. Dude, we've been talking about yeah. this. Mississippi. We always <laughs> keep saying it. Yeah. Steamboat. We go on a steamboat. We, we got it set it up. I mean, it's only going to be the amount of people we can actually get to do this would be like 10. So it can't be that hard. <laughs> well, we should do like a steamboat thing. like yeah. in Louisiana. Steamboat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Down the Mississippi. That'd be cool. With the called, bag of, called bag of gas. Bag of gas on a steamboat. I like it. What a shit show. I like it. (laughs) I wonder how many people Uh, would actually come that. Nobody. It will be us having fun, but that's all I care about. Like, (laughs) no, I actually got to (laughs) go. Martian, thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming into our tribe. It's been beautiful. Yep. Glad we found you. Watcher, same for you. I'm glad you joined the tribe. Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. That's great. Appreciate that. Uh, You guys are awesome. Thanks. You're awesome. Felix, Jerry, I just love you guys. This is just cruising with steak. Thanks for listening, everybody. We love you more. <laughs> yeah. I think that'll do it. So good night. Good luck. Farewell. Everybody. Cruising with steak dot com slash donate. Stay yeah, healthy. Sure. Stay healthy. Oh, shit.